order. Okay. The, the, uh, I feel like the, the orders are here. Yes. The orders are here. Yeah. Are there any yes. additions or changes to the agenda, folks? Yes. Okay. Okay. I had a. Um, email from Cliff Evans, friends of the town hall. <coughs> he didn't put in an amount, but he's asking for some ARPA funds. Okay. But he didn't say how much. Okay. So, um, can't so that tonight. no. So we need to put it on for next time. Okay. Once I calculate where we're at, and then I have two other items having to do with trucks. You guys are just going to be so impressed how much I've learned over the years about trucks. Right, John? <laughs> Trucks. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'd like to have you authorize Rick and I to work on filling out this form to for the funding. We already approved the funding, so this is just filling out the paperwork for um, what's the name of this place? Charlie Boys. Charlie Boys. Right, that we bought the truck from. So wait, what are we filling out the paperwork for? It's the the it's loan, for the loan. The loan for the truck that we approved the funding for. Okay, I lost track of where we are on that, but there's still well, more, still this is more, where we're at is getting the funding. Still more paperwork to right. do for a fund. Yeah, we just have to have a loan. Yeah. We um, so can you guys fill out the paperwork and then we can. Put it on the consent agenda for next time. Does it have to be submitted before this? It really needs to get submitted right off, and somehow yeah. the paperwork got lost in the shuffle somewhere. Okay. Well, we already agreed to the one. We already agreed to it. Right. So, so just that's, filling it out, and signing it, and sending it in. So that's fine. So we're talking about it. Nobody has any problem with this. No. And we'll ratify your. Right. I'll bring back the, a copy of the signed okay. document on the twenty seventh. So ratify Denise um, and Rick completion right. of um, loan paperwork for the 20, what is it, 20, 2024 Western Star. The 10 okay. wheel, yeah. Okay, so that'll be uh, on the 27th. That will be consent. Consent agenda. And there's one more thing to do with trucks. Okay. Um, the guys went to Viking. Where is it? In, where is it, John? Is it New yeah, Hampshire? Colchester. Colchester. Oh, Colchester. I'm sorry. Um, to look ago. at some changes to the parts that they need to put on the truck. Um, they removed the need for cameras, $500. There's the addition of a blade. What do you mean? No, what, what they were. They the wanted. camera systems on it are don't they get <coughs> like a backup camera? Yeah, yeah they, they just get covered. They keep the visible. They you can't. They're just not. Yeah, cameras there. that showed spinner. Uh, uh, so you can actually camera that showed the inside of the bed. Okay. And that was already in the original bid. Okay. So we cut that out because we don't. They don't work anyhow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. They, they just, just get full dirt. Just, yeah, okay. and you can't see them. So. And it's to change. Okay. Um, these are some additions, so it's going to cost a little bit of money. Change the plow and wing blades, $1,200, undercoating the chassis. There was two options. One was just a regular oil undercoating, and the other one is a 3M Schultz undercoating. Um, it's, it's discussed that it is between an oil undercoat and a bed liner, so it's going to be a better undercoating of the truck and make the truck last longer. Not that I trust 3M with all the contamination it caused across the country and the world. It sounds like this this liner is you know really lasts for some years the way it sprays on. Am I right, John? Yeah. The 3M, so it's like it's like the original lanolin that are good for more than one year. You know. Right. right. So yes. that's so this is and the and the carbides. That they're order that oh, uh, the edges are right. much better. Sure. Yeah, these, yeah. Also, they set last much, much right. longer. So. Okay, and the other should be cost savings in the end. Right. And the other two things are to install poly fenders mounted to the body, fifteen hundred dollars, <laughs> and add two heated work lights on the rear of the truck mounted to the sides of the pintle plate. 
Why are so, two reversed? So, so these changes feel like more than we should just be like, you know, sure, go ahead. I mean, but the truck. They're about five thousand dollars. They're it's they are. Two fifty. These are the two fifty and changes. Yeah. Um, but right. the reason, like the the wheel liner, that's to protect. But why the, does uh, it have to be done tonight? Shipping off. Right. Well, is that they need it's to. Soft and soft now. They want to how long is it going to be there, they have to John? Do you know? They're anxious to get it out, though. So. So if we hold this up until the twenty seventh, is that a problem? I don't see why not. Okay. So okay. Okay. so let's so let's do it then when we all have the documentation. Because another question I have is, I think we've been alerted that we're low in the something related to the highway fund or the highway capital fund or. The reserve fund, maybe? Reserve fund. And so, you know, paying extra attention to where is this going to... Right. So anyways, I just wanted to bring this to the board's right. attention, and we can do it on the 27th. That's no problem. And then where is, where is the... Do you guys know the email we got, I think, from Wendy? Yeah, I haven't looked at anything yet, so it was we're going to need to look at it. a week ago or more? That well, we and she sent one out today, too. Another one of the same thing? Okay. Yeah. I'm so we need to look at the budget and see where this money is going to come from. Okay. Yeah. But the, it comes to fifty-two fifty. And I mean, I'm not a fan of throwing good money after bad. So it's just a question of knowing where it's going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These are all really good. That protects the spinner. It's, we have a lot of salt throw by those wheels. We just so have this to keeps know that from being thrown up into those places. That it we just have to know that, that we've accounted for it. Right. And have a sense of where the money's where it's going to come. Right. From. The same thing yeah. with the friends' request. They need to give us the amount, yep. and I need to see where we're at and how much we spent. We got another hundred and thirteen dollars added no, to that our ARPA fund. Cover the, right. The, the, the undercoating, but yay! Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what we're what we're all right. So we have information about next meeting. We're not actually endorsing anything fully tonight. No. We're just acknowledging that you guys are going to do work on the loan paperwork. Right. Which okay. the loan has already been approved. The okay. price has already been approved by the voters. So we're not making any changes to tonight's agenda. Actually, no. It's actually just updates. Okay. Um, and the warrants are, anybody else got anything that we want to add to the agenda? Okay, so, uh, the warrants are circulating. Okay. Um, are there folks here for public comment on items not on the agenda? Yes, March? I'm not 100% sure. I have a, a, a request concerning the, the, the permit application. Should I do it now or should I do it? Um, oh, we don't have that on the agenda, so you can come up and yep, okay. articulate your request. Yes. Um, my first question is, have you reconsidered um, signing the permit applications, or are you waiting until the next select board? Will? We have not. We have. We answered that question at the last meeting, so I, if your question is whether we've reconsidered since then, no. Okay, uh, then I would like to request that we get the applications, permit applications back because the Curtis Pond Association would like to submit them with our signatures. Okay. Yeah, and I have them right here, Marge. Okay, and the main reason for that is because we are concerned about how quickly they will be acted on and we want to get them in and get some We've, we, we just recently got back a, another request on some other thing we did. We want to see if there's any additional things that we need for the application in a timely fashion. So okay. we're just are afraid to wait until we must May. Yep. Leaving our hands, going back to the association. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite reaching. And uh, the other, um, have you considered uh, who will be assigned? Can you put it on the list for the next select board to we, John and Denise have been our liaisons on the, um, yep. who that should be. Okay, okay. we will, we will, um, we, I'll call, we'll okay, create an, we're creating, a, we're creating a list. It will create a new category, liaison right. appointments, and I'll add that yeah. to this long list of things that they're using as 
some information around their to-do list. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. we can get yeah. that. Future agenda items. Yeah. Yes. Those were the uh, only two things that I wanted to make sure I brought up. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks March. March. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Who was doing this? Oh, I'm Stephanie. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Um, all right, everyone else is here for items on the agenda. Um, okay, so the first, we have our consent agenda item. Uh, we did this in two, two chunks as we sometimes do when someone is recused or um, recused, yes, from an item. Um, so our consent agenda item number one, or consent agenda number one is the shade tree plan, which we talked about last time. Um, and then a couple of reappointments, and just to articulate again, March 2023 is not a typo. These we're still getting caught up on some we should have done last year. So this is for formally for six weeks, I guess. Um, and and is there a motion? I'll make I make a motion that we improve consent agenda agenda item number one. Okay. There's a motion on agenda number one. Is there a second? I'll second. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah, I have the plan here for us to sign. Uh, okay, to yep, so we're signing the shade tree plan tonight. And then consent agenda number two is, um, I let the board know at our last meeting, the East Cal's Community Trust ask um, that somebody be appointed to keep working with them in support of the grants that they're getting from the state, which from the board's perspective involves opening up the portal and saying, Yes, no, here's new information. Can I just say that I'm recusing myself from this? And Denise is recusing herself because she's on the board at ECCT. Is there a motion on consent agenda number two? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I will let them know we did that. Um, and Stephanie, we are ready for you on the curb cut. While Stephanie's coming forward, I'll just okay. let everybody know that um, as you know from our last meeting, um, Stephanie and the, well, the Conservation Commission has been working on the curb cut and the relationship between the curb cut ordinance and the Conservation Commission is this is a great place for us to um, do a couple of things. One is delegate work to other smart people. <laughs> Stephanie being one of one of those folks in town, and the and the people with you on the conservation commission. But also a great opportunity for us to integrate our our um, values around environmental stewardship with our work that we do in other areas like curb cuts. Um, and Stephanie asked if they, if the Conservation Commission could take a look at this ordinance when we had it queued up to revisit, and and now you're coming back with your suggestions for us, Stephanie. So take it away. Well, do you want to you you speak to it? You, I know you sent it to all of us. Yeah, yeah I read it. The, the uh, latest mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. um, it looks complicated, but it's not really as complicated as it looks. That is, we tried, we had several goals here. First of all, as I've talked to you about, we wanted to incorporate some environmental protection in the probably only occasional situations where there may be an impact on a fen or a, on the trees or any of the rivers or the streams or whatever. So um, I told you I had several conversations with our town attorney and he was very supportive of our doing that. He felt, he and I sat there, we parsed this really uh, ridiculously worded statute, but it, it, we, we really just parsed it apart and um, thought that we could add environmental criteria. So then, I think I told you this, when I was looking at the statute, the, I mean the existing ordinance, I thought, you know, this, this could be reorganized better. And so I poked it around. Was. 
almost 20 years old. Yes, yes, it is a very old ordinance. 2004, yeah. Yep. Right, 2004, right. So it really should have be updated, and then Sharon, you had mentioned that that would be, a, you guys were interested in doing it. So anyway, so I poked around and I found um, some other towns, curb-cut ordinances, and then I found the League of Cities and Towns has a model ordinance. So I decided to, to, to use that, which, which other towns have done, a lot of towns have done that, use it as a, as a basis. But they, they also, the League also encourages you to modify it according to your own particular town's needs. And so that's what we did. Um, we tried to set out, we spent quite a bit of time on the process. We tried to set out a process that made, that made sense given the various roles. Um, you know, I know that some of the positions are not filled right now, but they will be. And the Conservation Commission wants to be involved. And also we understand that the select board does not want to be involved, except to the extent, the extent that they have to be. And while the statute talks about the select board or the, de or the select board's delegate, it was our feeling um, that it's kind of important for the select board to kind of own this thing. And so we tried to, to set it up so that everybody else does everything and not you. And then it comes to you in the form of a proposed decision that will have been worked on by a, dele a designee of the Conservation Commission, the road commissioner, the Department of Public Works, the D D Director of Public Works. And of course, depending on the people and the situation, people's roles will vary, you know, the extent to which they're involved. But we just set this up that way and then in the end, so, and, and the other thing is, so, so whatever approval gets issued is done by the select board. And we also, what also looks like maybe unnecessarily complicated is something that ha came out of the uh, league's model and I think really makes sense because there's a built-in compliance um, check. So instead of just sort of, as with most things, we just, you know, people issue permits and that's the end of it, you know. Here, the permit doesn't get issued until actually the work is done and that it's done in compliance with the permit. So instead of, excuse me, it's done in compliance with the conditions under which the applicant was, is supposed to um, do the work. So what has what they suggested was this thing called a notice of permission to proceed. So you start, is, they start the out. So there is a document. So there's issued. a document. Okay. So and it's for, yeah, formalized. It would be, instead of what we usually think of as the permit, and then everybody goes away and nobody ever looks at it again, there's this notice of permission to proceed. So all the work is done. Uh, that is, it's reviewed. Um, it can be denied, it can be approved, it can be approved with conditions. The, the this permission is, to proceed can be approved with conditions. Excuse me? The permission to proceed can they, be conditioned. It can be conditioned. Yeah, okay. yeah so that would be, to, that's telling the, the applicant, you can go ahead based on what you've given us, based on our assessment of the situation, you can go ahead. Yeah. But give that to the select board. There's like a proposed decision that goes to the select board. And the select board holds a hearing, a meeting. Um, it's at that meeting that the public, now this is not in this draft, because I've been talking with Joe and his associate about this. Joe thinks it's important that there be an Joe opportunity. Joe is the town's attorney. Sorry. Joe McLean, the town's attorney, thinks it's important that there be a an opportunity for the public to weigh in, mm -hmm. adjoiners or interested persons or whatever. For each curb cut? Or for, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. part of the The opportunity, idea. and you know, probably in 98% of the cases there won't be anybody. But I don't know if you're interested so in that, the, so the legal could, part of could it. Could that be, according to what you're proposing here, uh, be a, simply a a warrant agenda item on the select board? That's I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. However, okay, that's how it, however, it becomes, because of a, a, a lower court decision that Joe found in Vermont, Joe McLean, our attorney, found in Vermont, um, the court 
considers this a quasi-judicial action mm -hmm. that is appealable. Mm -hmm. There was an, a really interesting case where somebody appealed. There had been no process like this, but somebody appealed a curb cut permit sure. that was given to somebody, and it went to court, and the whole issue was, is this appealable? Sure. Is it quasi-judicial? Any decision of select board is appealable. And so the court determined it was, and then Joe said to me, you better put a little process in there yep. so that doesn't come up yep. again. Right, so some, some kind of notification to the adjoiners or adjacent property Excuse owners. me? Some kind of notice to the adjoiners and adjacent property owners. So we're not sure where it would go, but it's, it seems to me it might be most appropriate at the time that the select board holds a hearing before they, they issue their notice um, of permission to proceed. Because that's when the select board gets together. You know, it's not that, um, I mean, an employee's decision is not quasi-judicial. I don't think it can be. I don't know, maybe it can, but. If so. it's delegated. I guess. We delegate our authority right. as a decision to the select board. But I, I, think there's, I think there's several reasons why the select board should do this. Um, that the select board should be the ones that sign the, yeah. the permission, the notice of permission to proceed. Mm -hmm. They decide, they talk among themselves. The select board can go off and have another site visit if they want. I mean, if it's a case, if it's something that they're very interested in and they think it's like, you know, controversial or something, I mean, mm -hmm. they can do whatever they want or they can say, oh, this is great. This is no brainer. Which sign is off what we it. do now. Right, basically. Yeah. We're right. We we're, but we've evolved there. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. no, we've, we're the very beginning. There are people going out from this board to inspect. That's what I mean, though. But we've evolved to being more when we had more distant, right. more more like here are the standards. Does the proposal meet or not meet the standards? Right. Right. Um, my, I would, I as Stephanie and the board knows, I would be willing to delegate to uh, an employee. But the fact is, a right now we don't even have those employees. B having a really clear process. Where we, where we clearly the what you what the what the group with your leadership laid out does clearly delegate to employees. It's clear that there are standards. Here's what they are, and here's how you apply them. And and it's not 19 years old. So no, I, I, and it's it's all good in so many ways and. I do have one suggested um, addition that that I talked to Stephanie about earlier today, but I think, you know, as with anything, you you make a big leap forward in improving a process and clarifying a process, and then you realize what little tweaks it still needs, and that that'll happen. And we could think about this for weeks on end, or we could say this is so much better than a 2004 ordinance that everybody forgot we even had. Well, the 2004 ordinance is not as detailed. Not at all. Um, not a and I like, and I sat in on a couple of Conservation Commission meetings when they were talking about this. Because one of the questions I had was about notice. How do we, how do, how do we get, give, let people know that this is happening? Um, and I think if, it, if in the end it is signed by the select board, that's the final decision, and that's what we get recorded in the land records? Or, yeah. or, or, no, it's, or, it's, it's, or it's appealed? Yeah, so, so I can just finish the process with um, Sharon added something, which I think is great. I mean, it's, but. I'll read it in a sec when you're finished. Yep. So then the applicant gets his notice of permission to proceed and does the work. And then there's a timeline when they're finished the work. They have to notify, I think in this we said the department, the director of public works, that it's done within a certain number of days. They have to notify them. And then there's an inspection. And the same people who weighed in on the conditions or whatever would come and do the inspection. And then after that, there would be a permit issued, <laughs> you know, which would probably just be the notice of permission to proceed, probably be the same thing pretty much, but it would have a somewhat different name, it would be the permit, and that's then what becomes enforceable. And there would be probably, there would have to be another hearing and, or meeting, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be a big deal at all, but that would be signed by the select board. And that would get, that gets recorded. And, and then all the enforcement stuff follows, that's all the stuff is boilerplate enforcement. Um, and. 
I like the idea of having the Conservation Commission designate. I like mm -hmm. having two disciplines mm -hmm. looking at this and not one. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of check. There's expertise on one level that that brings, and then also it's a it's a check and balance. Yeah. I think yeah. what what would be really important as it goes is to to be really clear and crisp about what those expectations are exactly so that they you know this doesn't keep crawling oh yeah and you know we want to make sure that that permission to proceed or you know for our, or to proceed with work yeah. is is clear enough you know that if they meet those criteria then we, we don't want to have an indefinite amount of add-ons because that gets really expensive for people too if they're not if they don't yeah. know what to do so we want to i'd say we'd be clear there yeah, well, one of the things we talked about a lot was how are applicants going to know what they've got there? You know, where, how are they going to know there's, you know, a fen? And so um, that's why we put in here a reference to the ANR Atlas, Atlas yeah, that, that identifies, it shows everything, almost everything, not everything, but almost everything. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then also the natural resources that we listed there all are re referenced in the town plan as being significant. And then in the language of the statute, there's that language that talks about <clears throat> that it needs to be in compliance with all town ordinances, including the town plan and the regional plan, which we didn't even look at because we've got this in the town plan because we have such a good town plan when it comes to natural resources. So that, that kind of answered that for us because it was like, well, how are they gonna know? You know? And there really are ways of knowing. And then we talked about the application, you know, should have a checklist. It has a checklist now of some things, and it should add, obviously, more things to the application so the applicant knows right up front. Right. Yeah. Well, what it is they so need that to. people know right up front. <clears throat> yeah. We have a checklist that I think I sent you, but nobody's ever used it. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. So I don't know if you guys are ready to say the checklist is ready, but that could be one the icing on the cake, so to speak, to actually have the checklist ready to go and hand out to whoever's going to be implementing this. Um, any other comments before I, no, I share the language? No, I want to hear what you have. Anyway, okay. So um, on the bottom of, no, in the middle of page four, under the review section, which begins on page three, I, I got stuck in a couple of places. Um, one was that I would have preferred to allow the board to fully delegate, but I'm absolutely not going to like go to the mats over that at all because you know there's so much improvement here, and a future board could refine the process and get to a place where whatever. So all things are possible. The other thing I got stuck on though, and this is important, is we don't actually have a DPW now, and there's so much in here that relies on that. Um, and we have a road commissioner, um, but we don't know how a new board is going to, you know, kind of organize themselves around getting the work done when there's not people in the positions yet. So I added this. It's this paragraph L. And Stephanie, I added one little clause after I thought about it and read it again. You know how that works. Um, I do. But I don't think you'll. I don't think you'll have any problems. So this is what my my paragraph says. Notwithstanding the above references to the function of the select board the Director of Public Works, and the Road Commission. <coughs> Ultimate responsibility for reviewing and approving curb cuts rests with the select board. In the event, which would be true even, to John's point earlier, even if the board delegated. It's right. still, it's still, it's still yeah, you can us. never yeah. escape it's our responsibility. But when you're fully delegating, you choose your people well, you give them standards well, and then you let them do their jobs, and if they screw up, you have a management problem you have to deal with. But any so that that is inescapable. Ultimate um, responsibility for reviewing and approving curb cuts rests with the select board. In the event of vacancies, which we have now, the select board may, without delegating, fulfill these functions or delegate them to other individuals. That's the clause I added, Stephanie. We might not have a director of public works, but we could still delegate it to right. Jamie because she's so interested in curb right. cuts. Right. Um, similarly, the select board she will be <laughs> right. Similarly, or to you, Denise, who are not going to be on the select board. <laughs> similarly, the select board may, at its discretion, delegate curb cut functions to town employees so long as the process includes opportunity for public input 
and the final decision is endorsed by the select board. So I just added that to kind of wrap around. Oh, yeah, it's good. We don't have people, we don't have titles, yeah, like but we can still get the work. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Yeah, no, I think no, it's okay. Really so I will, um, I have, I printed this one page out. I have a version at home that I added it to. Um, I read it. It sounds like other people had a chance to read this. Yep. Stephanie brought it to us last time, so we all had a chance to reflect on the idea. We know mm -hmm. it's been on our agenda for a, for a long time that you guys were working on it. So I feel like we've, you know, people have had opportunity to recognize, ask questions, ask us what we're thinking about that if they were wanted to. So I guess with that and with this proposed addition, is there a motion? Well, wait. wait. <laughs> what? Because there's still some things in okay, here. Okay, so there's more you want to say. Well, there's a couple things. We need to figure out the um, the um, public participation part. Right. Okay, so you so this we is still do ninety five percent. It's ninety five percent, and also okay. Joe's associate, whose name is B E R I A H, and I don't know how he pronounces it, but he went over this because. You know, he said, Joe hasn't had a chance, but he asked me to give it a quick and dirty and see what I can, you know. What he did was he said, um, I changed um, some of this language to make it more of an ordinance, to make it more ordinancy than sort of, you know, policy kind of thing. And, and it's interesting because it starts out because the, league, the league's model was really a policy, not an ordinance. But anyway, he said that. So he added some stuff, and I haven't had a chance to see it in detail, but let's... It looks that's good. That's not in the version you sent to us. No, it's not in the version. I just oh, got it okay. late this afternoon. Right. Okay. Um, and Joe is still going to look at it. Okay. So what I wanted to do was um, look, go through what he sent and have a conversation with Joe in the next few days. Okay. And then, I don't know, if the Conservation Commission need, ha, needs to have another special meeting to incorporate these things, because I know we can't do it over the Internet. Well, the select board well, can do it. No, well, no, she's talking about she's whatever talking Joe's about. offered. I mean, or I, I could just do it and well, send it to you, and then you could. Joe is our attorney, so he, yeah. he could just send it to us. You could forward it to us, and we could do it. Well, Stephanie's been our. She's really. No, I know what yeah, I'm saying. If you want to get it. Published. You're talking about the process authorizing the changes to be made. I, I would. I, I don't I'm mean, going to be adding to it now. So, from a legal perspective, you don't have to run it back through the Conservation Commission. I think it's just a question of whether, as a, as a courtesy, or if you think people on the commission would want to weigh in. It's really up to you, Stephanie. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it needs to go back to the Conservation Commission. I don't think so. I mean, Stephanie will always send us copies of whatever the current yeah. version is yeah. for us to look at but, and review. But so you have a lot of comments. I mean, you're very good. But if we flag anything, you know, then we can... Plus, I could send it to individuals. I could send it to you, Larry. Right. I could send it to both of you, actually, because you're not a quorum. Right? That's the yeah. open meeting law. Yeah. Right. So yeah. no, you can make, share you information. If you, you can. Send, yeah, you can share information. Yeah, you yeah. can share information. You just can't make any... Can't have a discussion. Okay. Decisions. But if, if it's really coming back to the board with the change and we approve of it, then it's that's then it's kind I, of I would yeah, I would just want to know that you're that you have worked through those changes and you've talked with Joe and so you're really bringing something and I'll send you this language while I'm at it. Um, you're bringing something back to us that is ready for us to approve next week. 27. Yeah, 27. Next meeting. Yeah. That would be great. It would just yeah. be great if you could. Well, you've put so much work well, into well, it. You maybe, have. maybe let's do it this way. I'd, I'd ask that the board authorize Stephanie to consult with our town attorney, Joe McLean. We already did that. And have Joe, let me finish, okay. and let Joe provide us the final document as he would recommend having con consulted with Stephanie so we receive it from our attorney. So it just becomes okay. a select board matter. Does it doesn't get all messy. Well, and so let's the process. Let's just briefly um, look at the difference between a policy and an ordinance. So what we have out there now, I think, was it's an ordinance. It's an ordinance, it's an ordinance right? Because this is a so, revision to that ordinance. So I think we would want this to be an ordinance. Otherwise, I'm confused. Yeah, we do want it to be an that's ordinance. Right. Well, that's what it's so called. It well, be, no, but, but Stephanie called. said that there was that um, 
oh, it's called an ordinance, but Joe's associate taking that term made it more ordinancy. For, right, for because right, yeah, it was the format. It's it's format. Got it. okay. Because I based okay. it on the league's policy, and they said this could be an ordinance, it could be a policy. Okay. But Joe, but Joe's associate looked at it and said, oh, it looks doesn't look enough ordinancy directly. Ordin like ordinancy. He didn't say yeah, he didn't say that, but it's true. He said it's not ordinancy enough. So I'm going to make it more ordinancy, Perfect. and it's more like changing things to shall. Which right. I always so, appreciate. Right. You know, right. You Shows. know, it's those Such kinds of things. Word. Yeah. And must. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it wasn't substantive. Um, his comments, except that they're saying, yeah, you got to write some kind of public uh, participation in there. Yeah. And so when we adopt an ordinance um, at our next meeting, it's 45 days. Then it's 45 days for. On, yeah, I just want to say that out loud so people understand. A petition. Uh, to petition, it'll be a new board to revisit, tweak, overhaul, whatever. Or revoke. And it or goes into effect 60 days after the adoption date. Right. And so it's not effective we have to until 60 days. It's we have to notice it within 14 days. I think the, the statute says it's a town vote, that you're petitioning for a town vote. No. Do you remember? Uh, I think there is something Depends. in there about zoning. that. We've decided zoning. Right. But we have the authority. Unless, yeah. is there a broader decision about it? The voters of the town that all ordinances on the first No, no. Um, but it's just so, so So it's 45 days for people to file a petition, raise an issue with it through filing a petition. Right. And then 60 days, which would be the end of April. Portugal. It just takes effect if it there's takes, no petition. It takes effect. Right. And so, the, so what's, what's triggered on, and the, on April? 27th ish is we want to be sure that everybody's aware of it. Maybe that's something we could all help a new board with, and whatever steps that means. And we want to make sure the old one comes off the website and the new one goes up. And also at the on the signature page of the ordinance, I'll get the I'll get you the language. You have to put in, you know, it says here when it's signed, but then you have to put in the dates of 45 days for a petition, and then 60 days when it takes effect. There's some additional language else. I think, I think uh, Joseph Associate might have done that. Um, the other thing, though, we have a real formatting problem with this document. I, Stephanie, I was able to fix it. When I send you back a week. Oh. You'll do the formatting? Yeah. Um, there's also it. a requirement that once an ordinance is adopted by the authorized board, our select board, uh, notice needs to go to uh, at least one newspaper. newspaper publication, and the notice either needs to provide the entirety of the ordinance that was adopted, or a, 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 a summary that hits on all the points. Oh, really? Uh, you know, either of change or of importance. I would support, suggest we would do the latter, but maybe somebody, maybe you can step When in. does that happen? Uh, within 14 days. Within 14 days of adoption by the, the board. Following oh, okay. the date there of the adoption. Oh, okay. So people know about the right. ability to petition. So right. it would Correct. be 14 days. If you adopt it next in two weeks, then it would be two weeks days. after that. And, it's, yeah, and then it's, who does that? The well, select board? Select board would notice it, but I was or thinking if someone, could, if someone could put the notice <laughs> together for us. So, yeah, so the... Um, you could have, ask Joe to put the notice together when you speak with him. So Joe would do it. Yeah, yeah. a yeah. summary. We want a summary. We don't want to, we don't want to spend $5,000 on publishing all of Yeah, and eight pages to publish in the And then it says that the town has a website that it actively updates, which I'm not sure we do that. No, um, we do. Well, we do with stuff do like this. Actively? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, every okay. single... Every all right, single, okay. So then we're supposed, very to, active. We're supposed very to provide active. the, the <laughs> link to the actively uh, maintained to the, to the location on the actively updated website so that uh, folks can have access to the document. So that's right. the other landing page while it's in its right. summer period. Well, right. in that the, would be on the notice. In the so notice, we, in the notice we would say what the, the address for the home page, and then it could be right on the home page. Yeah. But Joe will take care of that. That's what you, you're saying. It's not reason we should take care of it. Read out the statutory site you're looking at, so everyone so, can study uh, procedure. I was showing this. Sharon the chair, our chair. Uh, I'm logged into this Vermont Statutes Online, Title 24, Chapter 59, 
which deals with the title adoption and enforcement of ordinances and rules. Title 24, for those who don't know, uh, is the area of, of Vermont law, is a uh, title of Vermont law that, that deals with municipal authorities. Us. All right, so we're going to cart this over, so, carry this over to the next meeting. Right. Um, I'm going to put it on for 15 minutes. Should be long enough. I'll get it to, or Joe, one of us will get it to ahead of time, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hopefully it won't take 15 minutes. Right. But, okay. <coughs> so the notice and the ordinance can. in final form. Yep. Notice, yeah. notice and ordinance in final okay. form. Okay. Um, okay, great. Good discussion, guys. Stephanie, I will send you, um, I will send you a Word version with no formatting <coughs> issues, plus with this paragraph. Okay. Jeez, it's, yeah, it's a little bit after twelve. Then we should continue this meeting. Twelve in the twelve in the afternoon or twelve at? Oh, I know it has been. Time flies. You're having fun. Huh? Uh, See, good thing you're running. See, Stephanie, you're thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, I guess. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and I'll do yeah. this. I'll work with yeah. Joe, and then he'll get this stuff to you, and then you'll take it from there. Yeah. Um, I also I you guys have done a lot of work, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Great. this is I love I love this model. I love that you guys took this work and ran with it. And thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Do, you, do any of you have anything else to say about this? Uh, no, I've got a, a couple of little questions I can just talk to you about it. Yeah, okay. Um, but I just wanted to say something. Uh, it had nothing to do with this ordinance, and that is that I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your support. You've been so supportive of the Conservation Commission. It's been great. We, we have a great commission, and it's been just wonderful to have your support, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, just Thank you, Stephanie. You know, Thank you. You know, I might get emotional. <laughs> I know. I mean, I hope the next select board is as, as supportive of us. But, you know, we're as a, as a board, we're going to miss you guys because it's been great working with you. Yeah, you, know? you guys do a lot of really wonderful work. I think a lot of you'll gain uh, good support from the next select board uh, by educating them as to your role mm -hmm. and your needs and what level of support you're gonna need on an ongoing basis because a lot of folks are pretty new. Okay, well, they're all gonna be new yeah. to this yeah, effort. So, so I just, anyway. Well, thank, well, thank you very thank much. Thank you for doing this. Thanks, this brings a whole new level. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. I, I, you know that expertise of being able to overlap people and skills. This is really important in this mm -hmm. area especially. You know, it's interesting. Somebody commented that this process that was set up in here for there to be follow-up to make sure that things are inspected, they said that should be in the zoning. That should be when a DRB decision is issued. There should be the same process. Mm -hmm. You know, there, yep, should be there should be actually written in to the process that there's a, you know, a compliance hearing and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was, it's just an interesting... Well, a certificate of occupancy. Thought. Other, many towns, <coughs> even outside and smaller, do a certificate of occupancy after right. a DRB permit. We don't do it. Well, some things for, don't take, don't, aren't occupied. They might no, be... No, but it's... it's but there's something anyway. like that. There's that term is used even if it's... Loosely? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I do have another question about this ordinance. Do you... We, we mentioned the checklist in the application, mm -hmm. so Don't we send it, to it doesn't you? have to be a part of this, does it? No, no, okay. no it's no. really just, it's a, it's... The ordinance is the big thing. Right, yeah. the goal for the checklist was for somebody to be able, a delegate to be able to say, <clears throat> right, yes meets, to, to make every piece of it black and white. Right. Yeah, you and that I, can be. Right, you and I worked on that. Mm -hmm. I think what's going to be important on this, too, is on the inspection end. At the end, we've got a conservation commission person, and it should be two sets of eyes on it. Yeah, yeah. Not with the expertise. I really like that, because that's where it's yeah. really... Yeah, it's so not just, just the road yeah. commissioner. The road commissioner has, has yeah. his or her own expertise, but then right. the conservation this commission yep. yeah, yeah. has theirs. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think Stephanie might as well stay. Yeah, um, I was going to say, we are, we we are the, running three minutes ahead of track, which is awesome. Um, and Stephanie, you're on the next item as well, so you want to just keep, keep yeah. on keeping on here with us? Ste and I will just yeah. turn this, this is the reviewing the historic timeline on the Callis Road and Bridge standards that Stephanie and Denise have been working on. Right. Will we, you just remind us of the background of why, we ha why we've been carrying this, I see your hand, um, 
and why don't you lay the why we're why are we talking about this tonight in like two minutes and then I'll I'm assuming you have a question. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I've, yes, yes, you have a question. Two, I do. Okay, then let's hear what the topic is, mm -hmm. and we'll have some. We'll hear from you guys, and that your question may be answered in that context. So, so go, go ahead. Yeah, so, 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 you have. We, let me we, see. We've met and talked a few times about coming up with a timeline. Who was involved in um, coming up with these road standards? We created a roads committee back in two thousand fourteen, thirteen, 16, I think 13, it was some, something mind. like that, and. What the idea was is to give a history of how we got there to needing to, to have some road standards because there was some um, discussion around what gets done to the roads with regards to ditching and mowing, cutting trees. Cutting, cutting cutting trees. trees yeah. Of course, now we have the shade tree plan too, which is great. Um, so we did have a committee. We this This document, and I found... There was a, some discussion about that this was not met, didn't meet state standards. Well, I found the document where the state approved our standards. That's right. They did. Well, they approve it for some clarity, I think. That I think they approve it to be able to enable us to access funding. Funding, right. right. So for right. that, so. And in order to know, meet funding, it has to meet state standards. Right. So right. this and, in our. And at first. If I can interject, at first we met with the state attorney. Mm -hmm. It was an attorney yeah, that know. met with us and another staff person. And we had a con collaborative conversation and we said, this is our draft and we're gonna hand it off to you. And they, they actually had their biggest issue was whether they could vary from what they arrived at boilerplate mm -hmm. standards. And we pushed the envelope. Um, as a result of their approving our standards, created the new precedent where, where other towns have followed on the heels of that. So um, the, these are equivalent or better than what is required in the boilerplate. So just FYI. Yeah, I mean, and the standards can be better than, but not less than right. the current state standards. So we went through all those hurdles. So Stephanie and I are still gonna work on a timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I just want to say, as I recall, it all started out because a couple things came together at once. One of them was that the road crew had marked 70 trees along the Adamant Road that they were going to cut down. Yeah. And then um, at this, about the same time, the select board got that year's standards from the agency of transportation, and you were supposed to approve them. And you kind of went, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, we don't like these standards. We don't like everything about these standards. And so you put together a committee to write, to augment the standards, mm -hmm. to look at what, the, what they were, what they involved. And some of them were just technical stuff that's important, and some of it wasn't. And then we added, but one of the issues had to do with, and the main issue really, you wanted this committee to look at this from the perspective of maintaining the rural and scenic character of Callis's roads. Right. You know, there's this recognition that the roads are, in Callis, are very much the public space. You know, and people use the roads for more than just driving. They walk, they ride bikes, they ride horses. And a subpart to that was we also recognized widening the roads generally resulted in increased speeds. Exactly. Right. And right. we had right. a lot of yeah. it's chronic. Right. Right. When you're on a select board, Jordan, when you're on a select board, you're gonna get the phone calls about speeding. It's, and you're, you're going to be like, you're going you're gonna to have your hands up in the air while you're on the phone. No one's going to see you but you and your wife. And they all, and that goes together. Yeah. I mean, with it's it's partly scenic, it's partly, you know, scenic, and it's partly safety. Well, in part, in part of Cal's charm, what we heard was our scenic roads. And maintaining that character right. for future generations. So that's what the basis of the road standards right. was. So we just, and, right, we just need her and I need to sit down together and just type something up so that there's something in the record. And the first, the original roads committee, I think there was Doug Lilly. J.C. Myers was Alfred, the chair. Right. Craig Alfred, Line was on it. Alfred Larry Larry Cerruti. Alfred, Alfred wasn't on the committee. Mo Cerruti. But he participated. Alfred was supposed to be he uh, was, represent or one yes, of the people right. attending. Well, he was invited to all the meetings. Advise, right. it was a, he right. was supposed to advise and report back.
Far, far away when you said that, but I don't want to get that name. And, and other people who, for sure, were Rick, you were involved. Yeah, on um, yeah. Trey, Trey Martin. Trey Martin. Trey Martin was, and Conrad Smith. And Conrad. Yeah. Conrad was, that's right. I mean, Conrad, Peter Harvey, and I were like a subcommittee to write it. Mm. Gary yeah. Schultz, you know, I think. Gary was later. He yeah. was later, but we had this. So it was, you know, the, we, the committee as a committee met a lot, talked a lot, and then said, okay, you guys go write it. And we met, we did Conrad, I have Conrad's file. It's like this with research that he yeah. did. And then we met with uh, the East Montpelier um, Road Commissioner. Mm -hmm. And he drove us around and he talked with us. I mean, we just put a lot into it. We read a lot of stuff yeah. and, and pulled it together into this and document. It was, and it was formally, so, so it was formally adopted several times um, in 2014. There were, uh, again in 2015, and then there were some tweaks made. I think three different times the board looked at it. And then yeah. later on, um, in more recent years, we didn't make any changes, but we restated. Right. We readopted. We restated our support and endorsement of those standards. And they are on the town's website mm -hmm. as being, you know, an <coughs> ordinance. And, and there's a section under governance or something for policies and ordinances. Under and ordinances. The, callous, the callous road and bridge standards are on there uh, in that list. And they have been, and the reason we wanted to revisit this before, because we've been carrying this and we wanted to, Denise is still working on it, to remind people what the timeline was because a few months ago there was this brouhaha as though they were new and they weren't new and we wanted to make sure that while the institutional memories are here, we've resurfaced what the timeline was, who was involved, what the process was, um, really just to underscore they're not new, point number one, and point number two, they are still in effect for callous. That's right. The question I still want to bring up, and I brought this up a lot too, I, I, I agree with 95% of it. You know, I still think the narrow roadside a continuous, 12, like a 12 foot road is too narrow. Well, but wait, it, let, me, okay. let me finish, please. I'm sorry. The, you've got a 12 foot plow frame and you've got a 12 foot road. It doesn't work. Now, if this, and that's without a wind. So, wait, let me, I mean, there are other ways. I've, you know, if there no, are I'm ways. No, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you. Because it, that is not for every single road. And when you, when it's you. It's not for every single road. So, road. so, yes. so that's not the well, way the standards are either. So, before right. you move on with what does and doesn't work, Let's just be super clear that people talk about 12 feet as though that's what was envisioned for every road from Lightning Ridge okay, to Okay, I'm going to continue, though, because I said, Hayden, the narrow, I said the narrow 12-foot. Yeah, I don't so disagree with wider. I agree. I was in on that committee, I know. Talking about, but that doesn't matter if you've got a fuel truck or if you've got a Volkswagen and a plow truck coming. A Verge doesn't work in winter. It doesn't work. So what I, you know, and things like, there are ways around this, and that's where you... Instead of using continuous 12 foot roads, you do things like actually create a choke point, even by berming earth, so it's actually more important, that are 30 feet long. But we're not. And we, I mean, this may have the same calming effect, but it's still, it begins to make it functional. I'm not saying these are the things where I think we have to work on and tweak, and I think that should be acknowledged. I think the road crew should be involved with those discussions because they're the ones who kind of know how to engineer this. Yeah, John Stafford asked to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. And this would be great if we can, I mean, there, the, I, the intent is really good and most of it is really good, but we have to be careful. There's a safety issue and a practicality issue based on the equipment itself that we use. And uh, we could use a truck with a six foot wide plow or something, but you know, we better hide fire 30 road crew because it's doing 80 miles a road. But, it's, but, but again, Rick, 80 miles a road is not 12 feet. I know, I know. I but know. you know what, so, so that's hyperbole when you point, say we need I'm, to hire. Well, wait a minute. Bring, We're not even supposed to be talking about right. this right, right now. We're talking, the agenda item is to spell out the history that Stephanie and I are still working on, not to get into the details of does it work or doesn't it work. Mm -hmm. That is for a future committee to re well and, and until Just but until tweet. that happens, Rick, until that happens, these are the standards. And if people want to revisit them, understand within more detail which roads 
actually need to be plowed by a regular pickup truck because they are, as part of our rural character, going to be narrower, then that's a conversation we have to have. But I feel like every time we raise up the but, 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 we fuel this idea that these Cal the Callis Road and Bridge standards are not still in effect in our town, and they are. Yes, not, not my intent, but my point is that they're flawed in some places. Then we can, but that's but that's for that's, for that's for a future that's for a future discussion. discussion. Well, right now we're just right now they are still okay. The I'm just voicing it as a board member because those roads are being plowed right now. Right, if we plow that, if we maintain that to that standard, we're creating a danger spot. I mean, that's the reality that we're in, then, and that then, that is not something as a select board I member you know member I really want to do. And I'm all with these. I'm with the spirit behind this. I'm also, you know, I've done enough roadway design myself. I know what's dangerous, and that's getting on the verge of dangerous and dysfunctional. We're setting ourselves up for problems. So I think we have to somehow begin to address some of these pieces. Right, but, and, but the, my, and I, I go back okay. to what I said before. This is on the agenda to talk about the timelines, and that's what. We're not supposed to be getting into okay. what yeah, works and what doesn't. Uh, and they, I, 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 hang on. Let, so these are these are the standards of the town. Denise and Stephanie were helping us with the timeline. Is there more that you guys want to say about the timeline and about the fact that it was widely discussed and yeah. a lot of people with interest and expertise participated? Is there anything more you want to add on that point? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you want to add to I just, underscore that? I point? just I want to <laughs> clarify, give examples for folks here of what might be an appropriate 12 foot road rig. Now, anyone who's been here know where the Bassages live? Yes. That little road with the grass up the middle serves basically when you get down to that house, one house. And yep, an oil truck might come from their house, and someone's going to have to get over on the grass or in backup, and that, that's an appropriate situation. It's not Lightning Ridge Road, it's not County Road. Another example might be, what is that subdivision? It's Town Highway 50, I think. Um, the Chapin Road? Chapin Road. Mm -hmm. Chapin Road. That was an abandoned road until a five-lot subdivision was put in before I was on the select board. That road was upgraded to Class Three standards but it is more or less a 12-foot road. It serves five houses. It was a class four, two-track, muddied-up road. Now it serves five houses. There's another example where that's appropriate. You're not going to see school buses going two different directions with fire trucks and ambulances. You know, you're going to see one car go by once an hour, maybe, probably not. So there are, that's what the 12-foot road thing was about. The concern was that if we had every road widened to the same width, we not only were spending beyond, beyond increasing speed um, and just ruining the area that those people live there for a reason, it also is a waste of town money. The wider the road is, the more material you have to put down and the more material we have to purchase. And then when you widen a road and you cut the shade trees, you're not impeding the, the rainfall, and you, you start beating on a road surface. The road crew knows you drive to a shady spot, and because we chloride our roads in the summer to keep the moisture in the road bed, it gets shiny under those trees, and there's no dust. You come out into the open, and it's all dust. There's a benefit to having those shade trees uh, in terms of saving the town money. When the roads turn to dust, the fines go elsewhere, besides harassing everybody's property um, and ruining people's lungs, by the way. Um, but that's money blowing away. Farmers know that, road crews know that, and then we gotta replace that material. So it's about saving taxpayers money, it's about controlling speed, it's about doing what is appropriate for the neighborhood. I just wanna make that clear. Thank you. And, yeah, and the narrative that the road standards are all about 12 foot roads is just plain Not old true. wrong. Just plain old wrong. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Stephanie and I will continue to work on that, put some of this information together, and 
right, so one, one final comment, and then I want to let I have, Riley. I have a couple of brief things I would like to Jordan say, having been part of this oh, process. Oh, I've, I've, okay. Can I just say these things? Why don't, why don't I take Jordan's sure. question, and then you may be able to answer it as part of your comments. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, now you forgot well, your question. I'm talking about multiple agenda items, so I've got multiple questions. So I guess how would the board like me to... Are these questions that are... Yeah, is it really important that they be answered now, here and now, or are these just kind of, you're just kind of getting your brain primed and you have a bunch of questions that we could, somebody could even meet with you offline and talk about? I guess I'm just trying to understand what, at what point the public is going to be invited to speak to these agenda items. At the beginning of the meeting, you asked whether or not anybody had any comments or... So I'm asking you... The, you raised your hand when this item came up. Before we moved to this item, because we, you, you just... Was it on the curb cut ordinance? Yeah. Okay, I apologize. Um, why don't... Can we just finish this and then... Why don't we... I do mean, you have I, something I about... this one, too, so... Ask okay. your question about this, then we'll let Stephanie speak, then we'll go back to your question about the curb cut ordinance. Uh... What is the process through which the town was welcome to participate in reconsidering the road standards? So I was present for the, the meeting in 2022 where they were, there was a motion to approve or readopt the road standards without any warned opportunity for public discussion to get into discussing whether or not there were going to be any uh, amendments or uh, improvements. And so, you know, I, I understand that there's a long history of, of this standards existence and it has been pulled in and out of various controversies. Uh, but certainly in, from what I witnessed in 2022, there was not an opportunity for the discussion that Rick was just uh, offering to me. And so while I appreciate the documentation and the context, I mean, I think it's worth recognizing from the public's perspective that there should also be uh, an opportunity for the public to participate in that, uh, in that discussion on whether or not it wants to modify or make improvements or further clarify, you know, even if you don't have uh, a, a particular objection to the motives of the modified road standard. Um, there's there's always opportunity for improvement and further clarification. And example of that is Mr. Brabant's uh, commentary on the differences between uh, a, a 12 foot road in this particular situation and that particular situation. And if that is a clarification that is absent from the existing road standard, then oh, but it is like a reasonable thing to put in. There so so I want to so I want to respond to that to sure that. It was, sure, it was on the agenda. It was on the agenda. So we so this board, as you have already observed, does not take an action without warning it. And that whatever meeting that was, it would have been a warned item. There would have been opportunity for people to speak. That's think that's number one. The other point is um, more broadly, there I think it's on the new list. We have over and over and over in the six years I've been on the board tried to reconvene a roads committee with this much success. None no interest in people coming back together to do exactly what you're talking about. Looking at the road standards, how do they need to be updated, where are they working, where are they not working. Um, yeah, we have, that, we have asked and for and volunteers. And it's on that list, it's on the town website now, Roads Committee, and there's no, no and we've heard from nobody who is interested in, in that topic. So, um, that that's I think you know that's the answer to the question whether there would be, whether there would be some interest if somebody took took the leadership to bring a group together and as you know as Rick was saying look at where does it need to be further clarified maybe people just need to understand better what it is and what it isn't because there is a lot of misinformation but in any case um, the item would have been warned whenever we did it in 2022. 
And there's been many, multiple, not just once, over different points we've tried. We've even made phone calls asking people to, you know, would you be willing to get involved in Roads Committee? We've posted it on Front Porch Forum. Haven't had any interest. Um, fair, fair enough? Well, I mean, I, I guess, but there is a member of the existing board that has an interest to talk about those things and likely would have contributed to it. And Rick, I was Rick on, is I was on the committee. He was on yeah, the committee Rick, that adopted it. Rick, is the, road, Rick is the road commissioner. If, if we were going to open I, that I, up I, and I revisit them and tweak them, it would be, be because Rick had time to do it. Well, that's where we, I mean, that's where I, I mean, my suggestion is that we look. I mean, I know John's argument on that, but the, the reality is any road, I don't care if you're, you know, just Grandma Parker lives on that road. You put a truck on or even a plow truck in the winter, there's no verge there. If you do, you know, there's, there's a truck and there's a car and they're, they don't fit. So the point is there are ways to do that, I think, where you can have the same desired effect. Right. And that's my point. Right. I mean, we can, you know, and, and it doesn't cost that much more to do a, a few, ex, you know, an extra foot or two on a road. And especially if you and you can still get the calming effect, the, and I, the, I think that's where. But then we you should work. then you should be on the roads committee when it when it is reestablished and convenes a meeting. You don't even need a committee. You, the road standards are out there on the website for absolutely anybody mm -hmm. to download, take a pen, go through, and say, "I suggest this change, this change, and this change," and you come to the select board and a public comment. You say, "In a future meeting, I'd like." 10 minutes to go through some ideas I have about the road standards. We have always responded to that. Yes, we always take people's comments, always. Okay, let's go back to Stephanie. I just wanted to say, it's partly responding to what Jordan said, but part of this process, I think it's important to understand, is that in most, many respects, the road standards have not been complied with. So this was a very sore point and it was especially sore point for the people who were on the Roads Committee and who wrote these standards. Right. Because so much thought went into them. So Time much effort. I remember somebody from the Agency of Transportation, Alec Portalubi, he came mm -hmm. and he said to the select board, I love your road standards. Yeah. He works for the Agency of Transportation. I love Callis's roads. However, the road crew never at the time. wanted to comply with them for, for a long time. As you all know, different that's not news. Different, I would say, that's different, not news. Different road but days. what I wanted to say is that, following up on what Sharon's saying, as part of the process, it broke down mm. because the road crew wasn't happy with them, but the committee wasn't get, couldn't get anywhere, and people were dropping off the committee. And so, as Sharon just said, there weren't people to work. Obviously, they need to be revisited. If there are problems with it, they need to be revisited and worked on and, and, and have, I think, I think a committee is a good idea because then you get the, the cross discussion and different people's knowledge and skills yeah. and everything else, but you need the people. Without the people, I, I don't yeah, think, I know. And, you know, and, and, you need the road crew, you need people who know about it, you need the people who worked right. on this thing. And we, on why they, pre, why, why do we have these standards? The How select, do we get Stephanie, them? Stephanie, the select board, the, at the time, we had a different road commissioner than we do right now. Rick is current one. Our last road commissioner was asked to be our liaison to that committee, as was our operations manager. Mm -hmm. I think our road commissioner attended one meeting, to my knowledge, yeah. and I never went again. That. And then, years after this is this was adopt, adopted, years he complained to us. So we then said, "Please go back." We gave him a copy of this thing, print it out, or you got a copy of it, mark up what you th think the changes should be and come back to us. How much time do you need? In a warm meeting, folks, probably on that video camera. Any uh, month, whatever. Never got anything. But, there, but we did feel the heat of his campaign to take us out before he resigned. So I just, Jordan, um, what? I object to the clip. That's pretty colorful commentary. That is, no, that's an actual it's fact. fact right? I understand that. I was there for those meetings, for a portion of those meetings, and I understand that. That, that is exactly what happened. Um, whether you like the color or not, that's what happened, all right? And when you're on a select board, you can run it the way you want. Um, but when we have an agenda item, the public is welcome to come on, a, on every agenda item. In fact, it's Vermont law. 
we have to require, allow the public to and we do. participate, and we, and do. we do. If Always the public have. sits silent and doesn't participate, that's their right to, and they can then appeal the decision of the select board. As we said earlier in this meeting, any decision of the select board is appealable. They can appeal it. Um, we wouldn't have to require you to appeal it formally. You can just write us an write email us and ask us to amend it. These are all avenues that no one pursued until this summer, and they still didn't pursue them. We asked, give us your direct comments. How many people have read it? There's a lot of anecdote and no one reading it. Have you read these? Yeah. Good. Good. That's great. You're the right guy for the select board. Um, so. Yeah, I think we should move on. Yeah, and yeah. I think we should keep, stop saying stuff about who's going to be on the select board yet. I don't think it's, I don't think it's appropriate here. Well, he's running unopposed. He gets right. one I'm, vote. I'm just saying. I'm going to vote for him. There he is. You're in. <laughs> Okay. And um, we had a comment on curb cut, right, Jordan? Do you want to comment yeah. on curb cut? Uh, yeah. So I have a, a question. So obviously, a, a version of this had been circulated. Has that been uh, a draft version of that been posted anywhere publicly for uh, for review or? We no. will. We will. Yeah, it we will be, that. and we haven't we haven't adopted it. And yes, we can send it. We we'll can. we'll get Jamie to post it on the home page once we get it from um, Stephanie or Joe so that you have time to review it. Does that sound fair? Still, uh, sure. It is an important clarification. Thank you. The, my concern is the tenor of the dialogue regarding this particular draft and the momentum that draft is now carrying into uh, another uh, meeting where we've already discussed adoption of that uh, without without public commentary on that ordinance that's being and so uh, there are a couple of things that are that are concerning and I don't have the details of the entire thing because I haven't been able to review it but from the perspective of somebody in the community who's gone through a process that was that that required and received heavy community participation. There's a concern about the procedure that's made more complex and the inherent cost that that has for the applicant to get through that process. And while I don't necessarily uh, disagree with again the motives of why certain things or a broader list of things should be considered through that curb cut application, the checklist. I'm, I'm curious as to what problems specifically we're, we're solving that have come up recently that aren't already uh, that aren't already addressed by the standards that exist at the state level and in our hometown regulations. And if the answer to that is largely just the enforcement of those standards, then that's that's something that that is. A, from my perspective, an easier problem to solve than to create a, uh, a fairly multi-step, broadly participated in uh, procedure for something like a curse type ordinance, which from the perspective of the state statute is largely about protecting the public safety entering and exiting a public highway and uh, the protection of public resources that are put into maintaining that public highway. Can I so say there something? There needs to be a, uh, a reasonable. So, so uh, a, a reasonable what? Finish your sentence, Jordan. <clears throat> so state statute already requires there to be a uh, look at the state statute, but there has, there has to be some sort of unreasonable situation created that, uh, by a curb cut, some extenuating circumstance. And they do allow for the reference to section 24 and, uh, and, and the referral to a town plan um, that does invite the, uh, the contribution of, uh, of the Conservation Commission and references and aspirations stated by the town plan. Mm -hmm. um, but 
it's one thing to make sure that those things are on a checklist. It's another thing to make sure that it goes through multiple steps of review by multiple uh, uh, by multiple agencies or departments within, within so, the community. So, so I'm, I'm going to respond briefly, and then Stephanie, let me see how I do here. So, so what you a couple of things you said I want to build on. One is that the statute refers or refers um, to, and I can't remember exactly the language, but invites um, reference and incorporation from the town plan and from, there's another, another. All municipal ordinances. Yeah, other municipal and, ordinances. And 24 VSA 43. And this, was a, right. and this was also a model ordinance that VLCT had right. so, done. And they're the League of Cities and Towns, I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. So we, so we, so the, the impetus was a couple of things for, for the work that Stephanie took the lead on on behalf of the at the request the of Commission. the request of the board Stephanie and the Conservation Commission we had a 19 year old ordinance heavily out of date um, and and certainly it did not adequately refer to and and bring in other pieces that are relevant when you're cutting you know cutting a hole in the to connect to the road and so the process to the extent that there's a detailed process is is intended to add clarity and predictability rather than have a process that hides behind you know reference to the town plan and you you know open up what does that mean and it becomes this whole other thing you didn't even know about what stephanie and the group and the conservation commission did is lay out a process so that it's predictable and transparent to the public rather than being unknown. And it, and it is, of course, she mentioned several times she's been consulted with our town attorneys to be sure that it is fully compliant with state law and consistent with the statute, whereas a 19-year-old ordinance almost certainly was not. What I'd like to say is, Jordan, you're concerned that you feel like this is being hurried along. I cannot tell you how many times this has been on the Conservation Commission's agenda. I would say probably at least 10 times in the last year or more, we have put curb cut ordinance on our agenda. Mm. Nobody showed up. Nobody. The agenda's posted. It's posted all over town. It's posted on Front Porch Forum. Let me, we went, let me just finish. No, let me finish now. We went, the Conservation Commission spent a lot of time going over every single little piece of language, every sentence, every word, to make sure that it was clear, that it was consistent with state law. But we had, we had multiple, multiple hearings, meetings, not hearings, we had meetings where we discussed this. And it's all posted and it's all public. That's when it was time to meet, to talk with us about it, and nobody showed up. So, except Denise. You know, as a member of the select board, was the only member of the public who came to these meetings. So to now be saying that, you know, oh, it's all being hurried through is a little bit disingenuous when, in fact, you know, it's been like a year that we've had this on our agenda. And we've had it, it, we've, we've we've had had it, it on here. our agenda. We've had it here as a cross-reference. And over and over again. That, well, that they're working on it. Well, truthfully, too. We've done draft after draft, and each time we got together and we went over the draft, and. And, and I, I appreciate that, those, uh, that that effort has been put on there, but there are other parts of that ordinance that, that maybe there should be other commentary on. There are other clarifications. So when, when you see, and I've been following it for a year and a half uh, as, uh, as a reference on the select board agenda, that the Conservation Commission would like to provide input in a revision of the ordinance. And, and so that, that is fair. It is there. And so, you know, members of the public may not necessarily be able to attend every single meeting. That a lot of them, most the of them agenda. are on Zoom. Most of them are on I, Zoom. Zoom does not change the fact that I have to feed my daughter and put her to okay. bed. Like, that doesn't, just because it's, it's a little bit easier. So please let me make my point before... I think I think so, we, no. Jordan. I think we're. I think we've we've we responded to. We've responded. There's been a process. We are not endorsing it tonight. It will be on the agenda for the for the next meeting. There will be more.
more opportunity then. I think Denise just handed you I, a coffee. I gave you my coffee. And we are. I kept the, I kept the last page because I wrote down the statute reference so we can add it to the. Yeah. statutes. I don't have a problem. Okay, we're going to move on. Is Riley here? Are you? No. Riley's not here? No. Okay, well. So we need to move that along. So we'll I did. I did that along. Gus, did email you him. Yeah, did, I did okay. email. We have a. And you got must have got my email. Gus, you ready to join us? Sure. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Bye, Stephanie. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys, for all of your work on yeah. this. Really, really appreciate it. Um, okay, Gus, take it away, Gus. Town meeting. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask. What? And I thought of it this after, later this afternoon. Um, and it's going to come up under our item about the informational meeting on Curtis Pond. Okay. You would, I think you would moderate that, right? Um, I could. I, when is that meeting going to be? It's going to be the 27th at 6.30. We might want to do 6 o'clock. I had a phone call about it. And I wonder oh, okay. if there will be more, more people. people than oh, we can do six. If, it wouldn't yeah. hurt us to do six and make sure we have plenty of time. Yeah, because sometimes it takes a while to get started. Mm -hmm. If there's a lot of people, that's true. Right. Um, we don't have the town reports yet. I think Barbara said that they were going to be mailed out. I think she said today. Um, or, yes, what's to, not let's see. Monday, so they didn't get mailed yesterday. Ballots and town reports we will be mailed in the next few days. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, yep. I've, I've taken one look, quick look at the warning. Um, okay. So it, the warning itself looks pretty straightforward and similar, mm -hmm. other than we're all out of practice with having right. an actual town meeting. Um, yeah. Right. Been, I'm feeling a little rusty. Um, four, has it been four years? No. Two. Two years we so haven't three had. Three years since we 20, We did it in 2020, so three it was three years ago. We yeah. barely, yeah, we did it in 2020, and then a week later everything shut down. Right, every that's when everything. So it's been hit. three years. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. I didn't actually print it for tonight. The warning is pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah. There's not much. Con no, there's nothing really controversial. Mm -hmm. I can't remember that we've ever separately uh, warned an article about the ambulance service and maybe it's just because of the number maybe we've had it before so i don't know if no we well no we, we we've warned them we've warned the pieces of the budget for the ambulance separately because i think i looked we did that <laughs> I, I know i remember this pretty clearly we we did not used to back in the other the early meeting in person days we did not and we we changed that we changed that just Le I, two years ago. One, yeah, two one time or two times we've done it separately, and we, I mean, the history, in case you're interested, is that we revisited the contract with Montpelier Fire Department to allow it to be worn separately. Yeah. That, that's fine. I guess all I'm saying is because it's a large number, somebody should be prepared to speak. That's so a, we, that's actually yeah. a good point. Somebody from EMF, making sure we have somebody from yeah. EMFD there. Okay, I'll make sure there's somebody yeah. there. And I and I'd say that's really you know when we've gotten together in the past to talk about how town meeting would go, to the extent that any of you, you know, whether it's something in a, in a town report that one of you wants to be the person to speak to, I assume the cemetery commission will speak for itself um, right. in terms of their budget. But if it, just let me know in advance about who that who the people might be on point mm -hmm. on particular okay. issues. I assume mm -hmm. if there are road questions, I'm going to go to you first. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, and um, yeah, I think. Um, and, and I guess the other, only other thing I'd say is you know when there've been controversial issues in the past, um, it's usually been better for me to. So I've often reached out and called somebody to say what's on your mind and talk to them about how they can have an impact or not uh -huh. about the issue they're concerned about. So if there's anybody you want me to give a call to, let me know. And I think I'll do my best to reach them ahead of town meeting. Um, okay, so, I'm so far the one call I've gotten was somebody who wants to amend the budget so that there can be, there could potentially be reimbursement for select board members, but that's the only thing anybody's called me about so far. 
Okay. And I okay. usually get very few calls. So we have EMFD, Cemetery Commission, and then usually if I'm remembering back to the good old days of in-person, usually you, at, at the beginning I think of the warning, it says updates from blah, 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 and that's when you give like the Conservation Commission or the Trails Committee an opportunity to have somebody speak if they would like to. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, or it's a time, you know, to accept the reports of the various town bodies. It's a time for anybody to ask Questions. any question they might want to ask about how the town does its yeah. business. So. Okay. Well, I can try to, I'll contact EMFD and Cemetery to let them know to have somebody available to answer questions. Do you think we need Woodbury Fire Department too? They they usually show up. Yeah, they're usually, they're usually there. But, but yeah, the they, they, there. No. you know, nothing okay. is as inexpensive as it once looked. Right. So right. Uh, okay. It's. I think the other thing about the fire and ambulance budget, um, if we. I can I can bring recent town reports we've, because we've been putting that pie graph in for recent years, mm -hmm. um, three or four years, and even though the number is big, it's as a piece of the whole, the percentage is staying about the same, or whatever. It's grown. It's grown um, over the past. What did we look at? Five to ten, not as much as people think. Mm -hmm. um, but it used to be voted on just as part of a big of the big number, so it was a little bit hidden, and now it's not hidden. Yeah, we pulled it out of the big budget and made it a separate item so that people could see where their money's going to. And and I, I've had good feedback from people on yeah. having it so that people can see the action. You know, you don't have to search through the whole yeah. budget. So I've had good feedback on that. Yeah. And there's usually somebody who's going to run through every single line item and find something that mm -hmm. they want to ask a question about. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. have to get retuned on how they're supposed to do. I, I think actually one of the questions we might anticipate because I have had these questions is um, around <coughs> positions. You know, the I mean, there's open positions at every level. There's an entirely open roads committee. If people want to convene a roads committee, come tell us. And I mean, it would take more than one to call it a committee, but <laughs> um, that would be really welcome. But we have an we have an open position for director of public works. We have the open position treasurer. for treasurer. Um, but what what is confusing is the way that those budget lines carry across year to year. We leave we leave the words in for three years, even if there's no numbers, mm -hmm. and that is super confusing. Well, but you have to. But we have to. I mean, that's just right. the way accounting accountants think about the world. So the, the words are there. And what we did for those open positions is um, the director of public works is still, it stands on its own, but treasurer, select board assistant, town administrator, we put all in one line. It's not three positions. What we were trying to do is say, there's going to be a new board. Here's a budget for a position. Here's a bunch of titles. So, <laughs> you know, try to say, pick a title, pick a different title. One of the, one of the objections was that the, you know, the title hadn't been worn. So, I mean, we could fill a page with titles, but the point was to say, there was an administrative position and a budget for it. And that I've had to explain to a couple of people who have had, who have looked at the draft budget that the reason there's still treasurer down here with no numbers is because that's a legacy from previous budgets and now it's all combined up here, which again doesn't mean that the new board's gonna um, fund it that way, but there's money there for them to figure out, okay, here's what we wanna do. Yeah. Right. So those questions I bet will yeah, come the up. The accounting procedures require that you leave it on for three, three years. Yeah. Right. Um, and we also put the director of public works, even though it's not strictly for roads under the road budget at the suggestion of our um, person that's doing some of the treasurer's duties through Nemric mm -hmm. suggested that we put it there again because moving it would have created a huge 
the appearance yeah. of a disruption in the highway budget, which isn't isn't true. A accurate. But we decided, based on her advice, not to not to try to explain that. Just leave it there. So I know those are things that come up in my mind. This might be questions. Um, so is there anything on your minds that you want me to be particularly attuned to or concerned about? I don't in think so. Itself? I think just clarifying, I mean, everyone's going to know that this, this select board is fully turning over. And so they need to understand that it doesn't turn over until the vote is finalized, and that's at 7 o'clock in the night of town meeting. Yes. So it would be the following day. Yeah. Um, and then the members have to be sworn in. So we fill out the select board role through the end of town meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. so Do you have any other thoughts? Um, I guess the only other thought I'd share with you as somebody who works in the public sector and um, is needed the aid of medical people in the public sector. And I work with a whole bunch of organizations who've been serving Vermonters who've been without housing is that public service has been really hard over the last three years. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Gus. Thanks, Gus. It's Gus. really hard. It is and, hard. Um, it's been really hard to work by Zoom, so I'm glad you chose to get people together. I think it's way easier, not that people don't get angry at town meeting, but way easier to be angry electronically. You know, we got to talk to each social, other. We social have to media. Remember that we're human beings and neighbors, and hopefully walk yeah. out of there as neighbors and friends when we're done. Mm -hmm. Time of the day, and so I hope people will come and break bread together. And we're not going to have lunch. Yeah, there's not going to be. You have to bring your own fishes and loaves. Yeah, where well, there's not, no lunch, there wasn't anybody available to do it. Nobody wanted to do lunch. Hmm. Is it too late for somebody to organize a lunch if somebody wanted to? No. Uh, probably not. If you know somebody, uh, well, they would need to let the school know. Yeah, you have to talk to the school. But open that kitchen up. Okay. Well. Yeah, it's too bad because that was like the best part. I mean, historically, <laughs> it's been the Kent's Corners. Well, there was a group that did it even before them as well. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Gus. You're such a thank pleasure you, to work with. Well, thank you, Gus. Thank yep. you for all of what you've done over long, some of you over decades. Yeah. yeah. So, a couple of us. Yeah. 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 Well, you're always a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. So, so Gus, will you check your schedule and see if you're available on the 27th? I know I have a conflict that won't end until about 7. I'll see whether I can get out of it. Okay. Oh, thank you. OK, great. But, yeah, thank do you. let us know, because we'll need We need to put else. it on the agenda. Yeah. No. We'll want somebody. Well, also, I guess I, there's folks here from the Curtis Pond Dam Association. Um, you guys will have people here because this is a public information meeting about the petition, the bond, the vote. bond vote petitioned by the Curtis Pond Association. So, I think it would be awkward, awkward for the select board to be you know, kind of taking the lead on it when it's... it's well, we, we need you here to answer questions. Yeah, it's, right. it, it really right. is. It, mm -hmm. It's from it's from the... It's on the ballot because of the association's petition. So you all, please make sure that there's people here to answer How, questions. Yeah. Are we the only ones on this meeting agenda? Are there other... Oh, for the informational meeting? No, just Curtis Pond, because that's and the... Planning. Well, we're going to start at 6. Um, and then the select board meeting will start at 7. Well, the select board meeting will start after. Okay, well, so I think we have to set a time. Oh, that's true because it's a separate meeting. Right, it's a separate, separate meeting, meeting. So we have to set a time. It's a separate meeting. It's not a. It's a no, I'm just trying to get a feel for it. Yeah, so, so we are warning, be, for convenience, we are warning the meeting about the bond. Um, it's the fact that it's a bond that requires an informational meeting, and that's why it's only that's why it's only the Curtis Pond Association march to answer that question. So we are warning it for convenience at six o'clock on the twenty seventh. 
and and we'll warn it for a full hour. Right um, hour. And what I just said about we'll start select board, we can't do that because it's two different meetings. So right. the select board meeting will start at seven, assuming the Curtis Pond hearing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll come. It's 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 yeah. I mean, it's awkwardly our because it's on our ballot. We as a as a town host and have to host statutorily the information session, but it's a bond vote that arises because of a private petition. So we want to be sure that you're here to answer the questions about the process, where things are, you know, what are the next steps, et cetera. Will we be doing a presentation or just a You could. Questions? You could you if you could. wanted to. Absolutely, that would be I a good idea. So it's very hard. It's really your call. Okay, yeah. that's what I, yeah. yeah. Does that answer, answer your answer question, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna sort of propose that we put together a 15, 20 minute presentation of the whole project and the bond. Of the mm -hmm. I mean, you already have a lot of that, right? Oh, we yeah. have a lot of materials. Right. Yep. We can show the little video we have and, yeah. and then we question and answer beyond that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds Just good. Trying to get an idea of your expectations. And Gus is going to be, we, well, so <coughs> I should say there'll be someone there to facilitate. Um, there will Gus, be someone to facilitate. Gus is going to let us know if he can get here early or not, and then we'll have to, if he can't, then we'll have to find somebody else. You want us to go over anything that we're going to do, show you anything? Do you guys want to? Um, I mean, ahead of time? Just wing it at the meeting. Well, you're you're going, see anything ahead of time. You're no. going to no. want to present, put the best face on this project. This is oh, what yeah. you've been working on. Um, you've been fundraising. Go through that history. And, and then, of course, Talk about the concerns over the current condition of the dam and why we need to, you know, market it. Mm -hmm. uh, Just like you've been at the end of the day, you're 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 courting the vote, mm -hmm. um, and you're courting taxpayers, voters who are taxpayers. Um, you're gonna want to talk about the money you've raised privately. Mm -hmm. Any plans you have to raise more money privately, people, that will be very welcome. Mm -hmm. The call that I got was wondering what happened to the idea of different assessment districts or an assessment district. So that will be on people's minds. Yeah, so you might want to be ready to talk about that. And, and our uh, and Right. Sort of yeah. The, yeah. Right, the, the funding. The yeah. funding from ARPA, which will likely reduce the bond. Right. Sure. I mean, you guys have done, you've been doing this for months, just, well, in, I, little, I, just I, in little pieces, so you just I, gotta put it all together. Just yeah. trying to get your yeah. expectations. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it would be good if you could have somebody to take notes. Good idea. So actually, we had this on as an action item to schedule this meeting. We said I said six thirty, but I'm talking myself into six. No, I think six. six. Is, I think six is better. Yeah. Maybe you think um, an hour is enough time. It's gonna. Well, we're gonna try. I've only had one call. Do you have any calls? None. Okay. Um, I think an hour should be good. Our. Um, is it going to be just strictly in person? Are there going to be any Zoom? No, just, just in person just here. In person. This, I mean, let's remember what it's like trying to do Zoom from here. Nothing has changed. Right. Yeah. I yeah. I, 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 I know it's a bond vote. I, I think we should, you know, think of it as an hour meeting, but allow for it to run into yeah. 7.30 if yeah. need be. If we need to. If it does. Yes. Yeah. And, right. and can Orca be here? At uh, six? You, you need to ask for uh, coverage. Yeah, that's what I do when I send out the agenda. Yeah. I send it to this to the okay. person at Orca. Somebody always shows up. But we like it when Jerome so, shows up. So so that doesn't that doesn't serve that doesn't serve for people to participate electronically, but it certainly serves really well for people to at least review it after the and get the information. And we'll be able to Yeah, the, the that screen. screen. Yep. Yeah. Project yep. a laptop. Sure. Okay. I guess yep. so. so. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Through that. that. I don't know how. Who knows? Or look around. Yeah, you just plug the laptop into the screen. There's a place to plug it in. I'm sure. We and then you just turn on the laptop and turn on the TV and it, boom. <laughs> Dry run. <laughs> yeah. 
so I know a little bit about, so I know some about technology. Is there, is there a motion to conduct the information meeting on the Curtis Pond vote at 6 o'clock on February 27th? So moved. Okay, so we're going to, and I'll second it. Is there any other questions, comments on the board? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Nick okay. Um, emergency Nick. management. We have some things we have to yes. sign. Um, last time we talked about a facility use agreement with Red Cross. Denise has that here for us to sign. Well, Rick. Oh, Nick is here. Nick has it. Yes, and um, you, you took a look at it and decided you'd like to have an attorney review it. Right, right. And you right. got a response. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he said it. He said it was fine. So I brought it back, and for uh, there were a couple of places where, if you decided to run with it, mm -hmm. which uh, and it is standard. It's been around a long time. It's been used a lot by different clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe said if he were to rewrite it, it he'd change some stuff. But he said it's absolutely out. fine. <laughs> so do you want? So we just need a motion, right? Is there a motion to I make a motion approve? to sign the facility use agreement with the Red Cross for managing a shelter at the town hall. Okay, so so um, I think it's not just signing, aren't we also, we are accepting or approving something. It's an agreement, so we right. are. MOA, right? We're signing, right, the facility use agreement. We're, okay, we're, ex okay. Entering yeah. into. We're entering into an agreement. And the signing is to is to signify that we've agreed to the agreement. Yes, and there are a couple of uh, boxes to check off, and, uh, and a couple of to check off uh, can, that I'm recommending. I think it's pretty obvious what they are. Um, okay. As far as the form, so you want me to pass that to you now? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, we had the the motion. Is there in the I second? I seconded. Yeah. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And whose signature uh, are we putting down as the legal name of the owner? Um, um, town of Cows? You mean? Sorry. What are you talking about? Uh, is it here? I'm thinking that it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. The, the town owns the building. Right. Yes. So right. Who from the town is putting down their signature? I've the name of owner, the address for official. No, so that's the same as. Do we need to do just I, I move that we authorize the chair, Sharon, yeah. to uh, sign on behalf of the select board? I second. The facility is already filled out. So I can give you, I, I'll no, go there, through each page if you want. Do you want me to do that now? My recommendations on each page? Shh, okay. Um, on page two, yep. um, I am recommending we initial all four columns. Um, is uh, obviously it's, um, we are permitting Red Cross to use the town hall on a temporary basis to do uh, and for the purpose of one operations, client service, and volunteer intake, two storage of supplies, three parking of vehicles, and four disaster shelter. So those are all appropriate mm -hmm. functions that we would want ready. in an, in an emergency. In an emergency, right. only during the. So, I, so what I did across these four boxes is I wrote my full name, Sharon Winfannon, for the town of Callis. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then on page three. And on page three, um, under, oh, I see, under um, 10C, um, I think we do not want to charge Red Cross. Um, no, I wouldn't zero. Think so. So, yeah, I would say zero. Yeah, just say zero. Um, under 9A, you just... You, Put the in, your initials indicating we will not be charging them a oh, fee. Okay. And then we, do we put a zero under B? We'll pay zero. Um, Red Cross. I think we'll you can just leave that blank. Just leave that it's blank. Just, that's just the opposite statement. Okay. And yeah. then under the reimbursement section. Yeah. Um, under 10C. Mm -hmm. um, this is also saying, um, do we want to do we want to charge Red Cross for their use of water, gas, and electricity while the while they are operating the shelter? And I'm recommending that we do not initial. Yeah, I would. We're not. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we should charge them. Yeah. Service does. 
That's then, it for page three. On page four, um, I was just about completing all of that first column with the uh, legal name of the owner and so forth. Again? Well, the vote to allow you to sign on behalf. No, we already did that. Oh. No, we didn't vote on it. We oh. Just, we have to vote. Okay. Yeah, we have to vote. And make all the change and make all the yeah. refinements to the contract that I mm -hmm. just did. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion on everything so that moved. you just said? Yeah, all second. Okay. All so all we need to do is vote, right? Aye. Yeah. All right. Aye. 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 Great. And with any luck, we'll never, we'll never need to have a shelter at the time. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. But at least we'll be prepared. <laughs> and you want this back? Do you want me to? Oh, yes, I guess yeah. I should. It worked well with the school. Do you want me to so. take it and oh, scan it so we have it? I'll scan it and send, send, send it out okay. to you, Denise. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a uh, request for ARPA funds for the... Um, this is a... Oh, that's addition. So, um, just to oh, this is an addition. Additional funding because, and Nick can explain about oh, the yeah, generators, right. and that we we opted for um, a thirty kilowatt yeah. instead of a twenty-four kilowatt. Um, is that right? Water cooled too. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. After yeah. we submitted our initial, our original grant application. Uh, we had put in, we had different bids from different contractors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put in for a 24 kilowatt air cooled generator here. And then after that, we got input from various people, including Rick, um, saying, you know, uh, another contractor said, you really need a, a liquid cooled generator down here, 30 kilowatt, ba based on the square footage of the building, mm -hmm. based on the elevator, and this and that. If they came through, they looked at the service entrance. Um, so you can get by with a 24 kilowatt air cool, but the thing's going to be working hard and it's not going to yeah. last as long. Yeah. Uh, so he, he said, you're, you're involved, we'll do it either way, but we really recommend 30 kilowatt liquid cool, which was an additional $10,000. Yeah. So, okay. so I applied, uh, I put, submitted a grant application amendment to the Department of Public Safety for that extra amount and they uh, approved it mm -hmm. and so that means the match for the town would be five thousand what's the percent we're matching ours is fifty percent so we, it'll be an additional five thousand okay, for so us we get fifty percent <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it goes from um we approve the expenditure from ARPA of sixteen yeah. zero nine two to um, as our match, and now it's going up by five thousand three hundred and seventy-one dollars. Yes. So the town's match is twenty-one four sixty-three. And we, we're Denise the big. So related to that, where are we on our ARPA pot? I haven't figured it out in detail yet, but there's enough for this. Okay. Because it's an additional five, and we I think we still had. Fifty or sixty thousand dollars left the last time I calculated it, okay. and I'll do it again before our next meeting, so we right. have an up-to-date amount. Right. So it says on our agenda we're we're approving increases to the uh, town grant uh, match increasings of the ARPA funds uh, toward the purchase of generators for both the town hall and the Maple Corner Community Center. Uh, this <coughs> increase only applies only to here. Only so this way, the Maple town. Corner will okay. remain. So the question is, yes. Yeah, so the question is whether we want to. The sixteen thousand oh ninety two included both the town hall and the Maple Corner generator. The twenty one four sixty three is an additional whatever Denise just said. The addition, as a practical matter, is because of town hall, but the number okay. was for both. So, yeah. Yeah. bottom line is, do we want to increase the number for generators? From sixteen thousand ninety-two ARPA funds from sixteen thousand ninety-two dollars to twenty-one thousand four sixty-three, so we can match get the one that's a good fit for town hall. And the the amount of the mat the amount for the one at Maple Corner stays the same. Right. right. So just right. Just right. So this so is, is that just a motion. 
Um, I yes, that I'll, was I'll that was a second motion. That. No, no, I was asking whether somebody wants to make. I'll a make motion. a motion. Yes. Okay. Rick makes the motion. I'll second. You're seconding. And the motion is what Sharon said, Rick. Yeah. We are increasing yeah. our ARPA funds for generators from sixteen oh ninety two to twenty one four sixty three. Right, and this is for the generators and improving the, the water cool so from the water cold. So, that, so yeah. that we can get the town hall yeah. recommended generator. And just parenthetically, this the overall project also includes enhancing our radio communication, upgrading our radio communication system, and getting the uh, the equipment units for both this building and for Whoa. the Yeah, yeah, right. Is uh, any more questions, comments? I, I have a question. So the folks who install the generator are also uh, putting the service in to connect to the panel? Yes, they're doing it's all the, part the of transfer service. service. Okay. The same contractor who services the generator at the town office and at the school. This so is Brookfield. Right? It's all Brookfield, so maybe we can get a bargain deal if we have four to be serviced. Maybe all, for service, yeah. all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Nick. Great. Where, where are they proposing to locate that? Do you know yet? Yes. Behind well, the building, right? There was a lot of back and forth, but, that, but probably directly behind the building. Is that? They would. They would raised. I'm thinking it should be at the highest point. They're raising it. They are raising, raising it. Okay. Yeah. It'll be on a five foot stand. Oh, I'm going yeah, to call, I'm gonna call yeah. for a five minute break because I need to do what yep. Don is doing. <laughs> Okay, this thanks next is All right, yeah. thanks, thanks Nick. Nick. Thank you, yeah, John. John. Yeah, it's going on. A, yeah, it's going we Yeah, I was concerned. About that. Me too. Uh, it's where, where. And it's going to be on a cement pad. Yeah, right. And then it's got elevated. Sometimes I love to have a conversation with someone about the fact that it's so close to the stream, and so forth. I know there's a lot to say there. Well, you know, FEMA still based their floodplain maps based on IDF intensity, duration, frequency, rainfall data it's from the from the 50s. It's, a, it's we all, all know it's different, around. and the, so we got yeah. this building meets the standards for what is a flood to find a flood under your foot or not, but those numbers are all, they're yeah, all they're wrong. The 100 and 500 year figures are just garbage down there. They're all garbage. It, it's We're changing. changing 500 year floods in yeah. less than 25 years, so. I think all the folks in the top here has two welded hooks on top. Those hooks should be attached to the concrete blocks. Uh, right, so they don't yeah. flood away? Yeah, those tanks float. Yeah, you have to be careful. If anything, you chain it and you let it float so that it, they've been known to blow out of the ground, underground tanks. If yes, there's air, yeah. no, underground tanks will. If, if you have put water, empty, yeah. yeah, they can not. Uh, so it's, uh, but it's good on this generator because of the, you really don't run continuous load on generators more than 50%. Not if you want to get any life out of them. Yeah. And so. That's a good, and the air water cooled version, you know, yeah. you know that that's like a big, that's a big jump for is five this a gen rack? What is this? Kohler? Kohler, right? Kohler. It's a good, it's a good. Yeah. Yeah. He and Rick and my husband. We're both pretty. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, no, that'll be good down here, I think. Next time, you know, this is probably resilient scramble. It's in the works. Kent Hill Road Culverts. Yeah, we're trying to, yeah. It's one of the brick grant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's on the list. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the list. It's on the list. Yeah. It's on the list. Yeah. 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 Yes. The, uh, Are we back in session? Here. Um, here. No? Oh, you opened your cookies. I opened their pencils. Of course I did. Oh, I was going to open mine, but I'll take one of yours. Thank you, Chair. Okay, let's come back, everybody.
Does anybody want? I'm going to share. I just opened these. Sure. Share. Sure. 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 Um, training. The training. The training. It is actually the uh, it's actually the rescue the Well, those are really good. They are good. Yeah. I gotta try this again. I have not understood that really about that. John, it's your turn. I think we're going to be more of these That's you, bud. Oh. So, one of the many to do's on our somewhat ancient to do list copy? that we're trying to get finalized was. I got extras. Was to make updates and changes to our traffic ordinance or traffic ordinance that deals with signage, deal with intersection signage and speed signage. So for the select board's consideration, I came up with suggested changes. And I can just say in a nutshell, I mean, it's, it's got pretty much everywhere. I noticed actually that DR, DAR road is not on our town highway map. Who? It's not a numbered road Which on our road? town highway map, DAR road. DAR? What's D? Where does it mean GAR? GAR. Oh, GAR. Oh, Daughters of the American Revolution. No, it's GAR. Where is that? It's right by Liberty. That's not on there. Just FYI, I tried to address that. And I don't. What, what's the road that, go, that I just mentioned earlier in the meeting? Chapin? Chapin and Chapin. Is that on here? I don't think I saw that on here either. So we're, now that that, I mean, that is, some of that is class three, and we are getting, short changing ourselves in terms of high rating. Let's look at the it's map. It's right here. Oh, number 35. 35. Okay. Hold are on. these in numerical order, Jim? They're in uh, numbered order? Yeah. Get, get in order. Number 35 is taken right Okay. For sure. I, I just think I'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. 33. Mine jumps to 36. Where's the yeah, mine goes from 33. Yeah, 35 oh, is missing. 36. Oh, I, I thought you said it wasn't on the map. So 35 is missing. So that needs to be included in here. And that's Chapin is is 35, John? What is that? Yes, it is number 35. Bottom of page 5 is where it is. That's right here. You don't need any cover. Okay, where's God? Part of um, oh, that's Martin. Uh, it's in the village. Well, anyway, I, it's right here. This it is, is not the right north. Do you no, see this the, is not here. This is Chapin. Right yeah. right yeah. It yeah. follows up by the camp. We'll the map here. This is Mural Lake Road. Wellstown Forest is, is north, there. Here we go. Right. 51. Right. It's Chapin. this little. 51 so right here. So, okay, so, so that's so, missing. So the bottom line is this map is missing. No, the map has no, the map has it. No, it doesn't have Tucker Road, and I always order. Tucker Road is on there. Where is? If you said fifty-one, um, I don't see a fifty-one. It's on there. That map. We had it. I asked Barbara to enlarge it, so it's so you can read it. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of hard to read. I'm just. So Tucker Road is. Room 60, I So, John, where did you, th there, you said there was a number 51. Yeah, I don't there's see. 60 right here, Sean. I know it's just my place. Okay. What? Yeah. 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 
we actually deleted your house. <laughs> Don't try to go home, it's gone. It's burning now. The power of the computer these days. So, John, can we go back to Chapin Road? You said it's number 51. Chapin Road is... Because I don't see 51 on here. No, it's not on there. Oh, it's okay. It's 51. <laughs> you to add that in. It's never been on there, and we've been shorting this. If, if this yeah, is the ordinance... Cool. Actually, it's, no, we're not shorting ourselves. And this is a state map, so the state... Right. It's just not on our ordinance. And GAR Road is number... Town Highway. Oh, Chapin is 35. 51 is... I don't see a GAR, number on right? Can you read that? I don't have my... No, Chapin is not 35. I was wrong about that. Chapin is 50. If you guys come over here, you can look at my map here. This this is this this is disorienting because it's cut off South Calais. No, it's 51 is Chapin. 51, 51 is Chapin. Yeah. And look at the for the town of forest down the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. there's a yeah. road that says and it says unimproved, U U U. That's the road I was speaking of. That yeah, is Chapin. Probably 12 feet wide. So Chapin is number 51. Yeah, and that's missing. So that would be an addition. So essentially, what I did was, folks, and I'll provide you my logic. I've been driving around town and just for a while now looking at how many new residences have been built. We don't notice them. It kind of lets one here, one there. I moved from Woodbury to Callison in 2002. And in the short time, that short time, to me it's a short time, it's a lifetime for many, um, seven houses were, eight houses were built on just my road between Adamant Co-op and where it ends up on Pekin Brook. Eight houses, and there are two other lots that are about to be built. So there'll be 10 houses, that's just my road. And it's pretty much, you could replicate that across town. There are that many more residences and these speed limits, <coughs> the speed limits were arrived at 60, 70, 80, 90 years ago, at least since World War II. Um, and our town was very much different. It wasn't as much a residential community as a, as a farm community. And, you know, there were five farms on my road, and now there was there are no real farms anymore, dairy farms. Um, they're two hobby farms. Um, so given the change in the nature of our community, that it's more a neighborhood community, I, I was, was, I made changes to every single road that was posted at 35 to 30 miles an hour. In recognition that you're not trying to get from the farm to town, but you're going from one house to another, to another, to another, and it impacts all the folks along those roads. Well, and going back to the curb cut conversation, there's more people coming and going. Yeah. yeah. More Everybody's points. got two cars. More points of two. conflict. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the logic behind my suggested changes to speed. Um, the other suggested speed change, and we've been asked, since I've been on the select board for 20 years, nearly 20, 18 years, um, by residents uh, along County Road that feel that the speed is too fast. They, they drive through East Montpelier and it's 40. And then they come to Callis and the nature of the road is very similar. It's winding, it's as, as narrow or as wide as East Montpelier's stretch, and yet it's 50. And then they have to ramp down to 40. And then they have to ramp down to 25. So um, the ch other change I made in this draft um, would... Uh, what number is that, John? It's uh, under Article 4, right at the top. What page? Um, page 2. And it's in red, a maximum speed of 40 miles per hour beginning at the Cal's East oh, okay. Montpelier town line, extending northerly to a point beginning at 2,744 feet southerly of the intersection of State 8 Highway Number 2 Worcester Road. So believe it or not, you learn something every day. Um, Worcester Road, we think of it beginning at the corner by the Blue Barn. Mm -hmm. It actually, that piece between that intersection and Kent Hill Road is, according to these maps, um, 
all the same road uh, as Worcester Road. Really? So Worcester Road stretch. Huh. Starts at Kent Hill? It starts at the intersection of Kent Hill, across from the Maple, you know, Maple Corner store, essentially. Yeah. Starts there, and then it hangs to the left and continues. On and, that's, and that's all considered Worcester That's Road. all considered State Aid Highway number two, and as we know it as Worcester Road. So basically at the intersection of Kent Hill Road mm -hmm. and what we would say County Road, beginning and end of the pavement, from the end of the pavement all the way south to the East Montpelier Cowles Town Line um, is, a dis is a total distance. But the distance we're talking about, um, oh shit, this is wrong. Um, I made a typo. <laughs> it, it should have been two. That was a typo. Where? Two. It shouldn't say. On page two. It shouldn't two. be this. Let's see what it says. 40 beginning and extending northerly to a point, point. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. I did it right. So it's confusing. That's so. Let me say it again. A maximum speed of 40 miles per hour beginning at the Calais East Montpelier town line and then extending northerly to a point beginning 2740. 2,744 feet south of that Kent Hill intersection. Okay. So then that's where it So that's, that's the point where the 25 mile now yeah. begins. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's 40 between the East Montpelier Callis line to the 25 mile an hour zone. And then it drops to 25. Mm -hmm. And then we have, the rest is what we know. So that makes that, that whole section of, of County Road consistent. There's no right. up yeah. and down good. That's so what people yeah, that will, makes sense. through our 25, they hit 40, and it's 40 all right. the way. Right, right to the 25. All the way through to Montpelier. Yeah. Where so, it's 30. Oh, yeah, yeah. John, yeah, is, is that edited? I'm going to call it. Well, son of a is that edited line that you were just pointing to the first one under state highway, there's state aid highway number one, county mm -hmm. road, then underneath a maximum feet of, speed of 40, mm -hmm. beginning at the Calis East Montpelier town line extending northerly, but then the next one is a maximum fee of 25, beginning 27, 44 feet South of the intersection. Yep, same distance. Mm -hmm. Same distance. And then it can, that continues so that's just, north. That's, that exists. That continues north. So one is you're measuring from Maple Corner south. That's the end of the 25 point. See what I'm saying? To okay. the 25. And then marker. the next next just, line is the original language, more or less. And that's so it's just coincidence that the 2744. Is well, no, that's the point. That's the break. Point. That's yeah. Right, that's, that's where, that's that where point, it stops. That point is the starts point, and stops. That point is the point I'm measuring to either from the East Montpelier town line or, but that's the point. I see. I'm measuring to that. One, that's the one place we're talking about one side of the point, the other place we're talking about exactly. the other side. Exactly. Yeah. We didn't think about it more carefully. So, John, why under State Aid Highway number one it says County Road, Ken Hill Road, North Callis Road, and Foster Hill? Why, does it, why are those all there? Uh, because those are this, these are state aid highways. This first section is all the state aid highways. There, we get different, North there are different Callis, designations. North Callis Road is a state. North Callis Road is a state aid. Yep. Well, Part of it that. is so. So for hmm. Donna probably remembers this, or remembers talk of this. The state had originally planned, and it's it's still designated state highway because of this. Oh, because they were to gonna pave it, it from Worcester. Along Worcester Road. Yes. That's why Worcester Road is such a nice, smooth road. They, 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 that was going to be paved all the way through Maple Corner, and then the heading course. down Kent Hill. Oh, and then oh. North Kent Heading all the way down. Oh, I see. And, and, then, then, and then it bangs a left at Peak and Brook, right, right at that intersection where Moscow. it becomes North Callis Road. And then we're going to pave and it all the way And it goes all the way north. Wow. To, all yeah. the way to South Woodbury. That was supposed to be a major thoroughfare. And I think some of the troublemakers. Then along came the Cal's road standards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, actually, I heard uh, from Gary Schultz that there were some old ladies who, at middle of the night, enlisted some help, and they the state came in with their surveyors, and once they got all the surveying done, they came in the middle of the night, pulled all Put the all survey the sticks, <laughs> and threw them in the woods. And oh the state God. came through, and they're like vandals, and so they resurveyed it at great cost, great effort, and it 
was done again. And they're like, okay, if you guys don't want a paved road, you're, we're not going to give it to you. Wow. I hadn't heard that story. Yeah. That's, that's too that's funny. Yeah, that's very funny. That's so funny. It's, it's a great story. So, um, yeah, so John's point that we've been carting this on our agenda for a while. We even, it's been probably three years since we looked at it and we had several meetings in a row where we talked about stop signs. All right. And that's in here. Some sign uh, changes. And those, <coughs> those we never finalized because I think Mm -hmm. There wasn't consensus between the folks working on it and the board at the time. At the working. time, I think I think there will be consensus this time. So, so if you go to Article Five, yeah, mm -hmm. the other substantive change uh, changes. Wait a minute, I gotta get there. It's on page eight. Okay. Article Four, Section One. It's in red. Yep. Um, Kent Hill Road where it meets um, Peak and Brook Road. Peak and Brook Road. Yes, we're finally going to have right a stop there sign. Mm -hmm. Would be a stop sign. David Ellen there's, Bogan will be thrilled. There's nothing there right now. Yep. Um, it's a bad spot. So there's a stop sign there proposed. And then there's also a stop sign. The next one, believe it or not, is the intersection right across from the Adamant Co op, a stop sign where there's no sign. Mm -hmm. Is proposed there. On center row? Intersection. Okay. Right across the right at yeah, the center get, row would come center. would stop at that intersection. Yeah. And then Good. the other row would be continue through. That's actually the that's actually the highway then with the emergency route, so that would be the continuous. Yeah, center road should be the stop action. Okay. Is that what you're yeah, that's what you yeah. So um, that's and the rest are just uh, this language clarification because this thing used to say all these uh, well part of the all problem. the road names in red were added for the request of the select board because it was just they were just numbers right mm -hmm. we didn't know what and number one so to Toby did all that heavy lifting and I just I mean that that was all done for me um, the section two on page nine you'll see a highlighted section struck both the option of a yield at this intersection here at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. and a stop sign, which is section, section one where it provided I, I am proposing a stop sign rather than the yield, that's why that's struck. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. other proposal is gone. It was one or the other, you can't have both. Right. And so that is it. And then on the very last page, 11, is just the added language recognizing this is yet another iteration, another version to be adopted sometime in the future. Um, actually, I, I propose that we adopt this at the next meeting. On the 27th? Mm -hmm. So it'll be February. So Do we, can I ask one question? Yes. Adam at Co-op, down to that, in that, you know, that area is that large expanse of gravel. And we've run into opposition in there, but that is, you know, way over, it's way over. Thing, but huh? yeah, yeah, I get it. We, I mean, I discussed this. Yeah. Cleaning this up. One thing, if you want to control speed around that road and in that congestion, it would be to really bring that down to the standard road widths, tee it up, green out the rest of the space, or maybe have parking, you know, separate parking for the automatic co-op in front, but not have the road touching the steps. I know. I, this I, is like a not really a good, there. and it's, it's good with costing the towns, you know, a lot. That's a lot of plowing, <laughs> snow plowing, I think. Go through there. And then it's also a risk. I mean, it's, it's. I, so that's, that gets into road design, which, um, that doesn't have anything to do with this. No, that's good. I'm just right? bringing it up as a, Yeah. No, I think you're right. I'm going to, I'm, um, I'm going to say something here. So you and I talked earlier. I, we, we've talked a lot about speed. We've had a lot of people asking us to do something about speed. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about and allocated money from the ARCA funds for a study, but we haven't done anything to make that happen. Um, and we're not going to have a chance to do that. Right. I'm, and I would support 30 miles an hour on all of our town roads. 
Yes. Where they're 35. Where they're 35. Right, right. So here's my, here's my theory. Given what we heard earlier <coughs> um, about curb cuts, where all, all the Conservation Commission did is go through and actually refer to the plan and make the references a little more substantive and lay out a clear process. More transparency. <laughs> I mean, it's a much better document. It's a much better document, and it's much more clear. And there's, there's not an or, there's not, there's not substantive changes. It's, it's incorporating <coughs> things that weren't clear before and updating a 19-year-old ordinance. I, this, is and and in, and only affects new curb cut people. Right. Anybody who comes in and applies for a curb cut will have a new ordinance. New letter. There you go. You know, this changing the speed limit in town mm -hmm. is affects every single person who drives on our roads. And I, even though I support it, I would not feel great about approving this next time. I where I would feel where I would feel okay about approving it next time. And you guys can argue with me. I mean you can argue with me. I'm only one vote. But I think we're you know saying a stop sign's gonna go here. I mean that doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Stop sign we decide to stop sign. We've had a lot of discussion about that over yeah. the years. Yeah, yeah hang on the location recorded an ordained location for that stop sign and in case you ever got law enforcement and so that's what we did so they all said that's what they're all set right because they, right. they have to be a certain that's what that's they have to be the stop signs have to be a certain right, right? Probably the standard for no, 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 standard. john's talking about the location. location of the sign that's that's what we can't does. just go put a white dot anywhere we want to it's already prescribed well it's at the intersection so we so, stop at the intersection. So I think he's worried about the location of the, the precise sign. look. The no, that's that's not that's not something that's in an ordinance. None of these signs. That's are, never been in. There's signs. So they have to say for a, like say I get we have a say we have law enforcement on that, and they write you a ticket for that stop sign. If it goes to court. I've always thought that that stop sign had to have its own ordination number. And that location had to be pinpointed, and there was a map of that location. Hmm. And if it wasn't there, it's invalid. I know? don't think that's how it works in Vermont. With this There's a height requirement. The, the, the distance from the road, the post, the law in Vermont is where the post is, mm -hmm. is the stop, presumed stop line. So if you stop beyond the post, you, you're in the intersection. Well, and John, I can tell you that this. The draft that you're holding that says where there are or are where there are stop signs, this that is that is not substantively different than this ordinance has been for as long as anybody here could remember. Right, right. Let's first and, except it. there's a couple of places where we're saying it would be good to have a stop sign here. Yeah, this was originally adopted in 1990. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's so it's what 30 plus years old. Yeah. Um, so, so that's my point of view is that if we, you know, I don't know if the point of view we heard earlier on the um, curb cut is widely held and that that's something that people need a long time to chew on, but this one I would imagine people will have a reaction to. It does affect everybody. Not we just can, not just the applicants for a totally curb cut. We can share. Yeah, because I I totally agree with you because I think this is a big change to things, and I feel like it's kind of not being um, enough. Well, we can warn it area for, for input. We can warn it for a vote next meeting, and folks can come and speak to it, and then we can decide whether or not to vote it or not. So I want to hang on, John. I want to just I want to check in with with the I would I would I would choose to warn it only for the stop signs, and and then give give the you know the draft to the and John it's it's I well I, you know the people petitioned us on County Road. I They've been patient. They've been waiting for the select board to get off its sorry ass for a decade. 
And here we are, and we're going to just wait, wait again. Well, we could, make, we could make the county road changes that people, that I think are defensible. People have been asking mm -hmm. for that. We've had a lot of conversation about county road speed. We could make lightning grid changes. That's another one we keep saying. You know, Doug has been here many times. We all know about that. Do you and it's not, it's, not that I, it's not that I don't agree. It's just that I, I want us to not be put, making ourselves more vulnerable to the, the we reason, didn't create enough discussion. Madam Chair, the reason I made it 30 across the board was to provide equity. And we discussed this on the yeah. phone. I know, At I first, agree. I was just going to make a simple set of changes, but I wanted to provide equity so that I, if Marge is living on a 35 and she sees, you know, Bliss Road is going to 30, well, I, you I know. I agree with that, John, but I just don't know if people have really paid attention enough that they need a little more time. Right, right. So, so Marge, what I'm suggesting to the chair and you and anyone else who's listening is that we warn it for a potential vote. We do this all the time. We've done this for the 18 years I've been on here. Suddenly this is something we're afraid to do because of one commenter tonight. Um, you warn it for the vote. The public shows up or not. Um, the public shows up, says you know, we're really concerned, and we don't vote. But I, I don't That's how it's done. March, 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 March. Let's let the That's how it's done. We, we heard you. It's never let been done any, any different. We so, always warn it for the vote, and we have to take comment. So, Every ordinance. So let's let's um, the road standards. Same thing. Let's hear from our other colleagues at the city. Okay. Well, I mean, right. This has been on. I hear what I hear. What Marge says about the public and providing that opportunity. This has been on our agenda for years to get this done. Um, I'm. I don't think I'm so concerned that people. I don't think people are going to be opposed to this. A speed limit being reduced more than as much as they would if we were saying the county road speed is 40 and now we're going to make it 60. Right. I think, especially the county road, I mean, we've been hearing, we had that petition that was filed a couple of years ago about county road. Mm -hmm. um, I remember all the times that David Ellen Bogan came and asked us for a stop sign at this intersection. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I really appreciate that the public should have an opportunity to weigh in. And, and, if, they, and if they come next meeting and there's a huge problem, then we don't have to adopt it. No. And the other, the other thing, that just and for clarification. Sort of, and it's already been something that we've had since 1990. And the process is, just so folks know, um, we adopt an ordinance. It doesn't go into effect for 60 days. There's a 45-day window where the public can come to the select board, actually the future select board, saying, we don't like that ordinance, or we don't like these particular areas. We'd like to, you know, so they can ask the select board to have further hearings on it. They can, a 5%, a 5% of a petition containing 5% uh, of, of the signatures of 5% of our electorate filed at the town clerk's office. Will, will manda mandate hearings be triggered and that the adoption process be stayed until there's hearings? Um, there, there's, that's, that's the public process. That's the process that's anticipated. That's why there's notice. It, so, it doesn't go into effect for 60 days. So, and right. so the public weighs in that. Rick, do you have a comment? Yeah, I tend to agree with John on this. We, I mean, just in the couple of years I've been on this board, we've had a lot of We've had a lot of feedback from people complaining about speed on these roads. And a lot of it just by county road, I completely agree with. That's consistency across that road. It's really bad to have speed limits jumping up and down. It's, it's better, but we're, it's definitely, I think that's a really good move. The stop actions, all of that, I think those are all good. We're not living in the 40s or 50s anymore. Like John said, we're having increase of tra increasing traffic loads. So these multiple intersection areas that have just been free flowing are going to be more and more problematic. We have to, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's more than traffic calming when you have a warning sign like that. That is, I mean, this is because it starts addressing these issues that we are hearing about regularly. Speed. Right. I think the reduction of the 
35 to 30. I'm okay with that. There are places, I mean, I can go either way on that. I like the, there, the fact that we've got trees, <laughs> we, we aren't cutting clear zone, that's natural traffic calming. So I think it's, I actually like the lower speed limit. And we don't have serious accidents in this year yet, you know, but yeah. like John said, we're building out slowly and roads aren't a slow, you know, you, these tend to be pretty institutional once they get, you know, what we do now is probably gonna be here for another 20, 30 years. And, you know, your risk run as that development happens, you get more and more traffic, you get more and more drive, mm -hmm. cut, curb cuts. Every one of those is a new point of conflict. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm good with this. And I, and I, like I said too, if people show up and want to, I, I, you know, we yeah. can debate this, we can do it. I, you know, I've certainly heard a lot of feedback, you know, that would be supportive of this, and, you know, since we've been on the board. So I, I am good with going forward. So where does that leave us? Is it two and two? Well, we're not voting. Oh, well, you set the agenda, <laughs> Madam Chair. You, you're either going to uh, agree with your... The question. Yeah, John. Go ahead, John. All the signs, I, I, think I can agree with the law when speaking on it, but what would we get enforcement on? We have well, the same only enforcement we have now. The only enforcement. So the only on the county. They're not the only the only it. enforcement we have is the sheriff yeah. and people being good, responsible, respectful. Might I add to me, driving the speed limit or less on some of these roads is a matter of respect. This is what I tell my husband all the time. Slow down. I, I being disrespectful. I <laughs> I think. Um, I wasn't really done, but okay. But I, I mean, it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't support it. It's a question of the timing. Um, and so, and I can see, I can see three, three different points of view. One is this general public feeling like this didn't get enough airing, that we're reducing, and people having, you know, even even if we warn it. It was, you know, only one meeting, and people people might have a reaction to that. And if we were going to continue to be the board, dealing with the heat of that, that would be one thing. But we're not, and so that brings in the second point of view: is a new board feeling like, well, hang on, you left, you did this, and you left it for us. On the other hand, on the, my, the third point of view. Let me finish. The third point of view is a new board saying, thank you for getting that done. Right. And getting it so it's done, and That's it doesn't hang out. Do. It doesn't mm -hmm. hang out on our to-do list. You guys are going to have a long enough list. And 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 I think I'm saying all of that out loud because those are the people who are going to have to deal with whatever happens next. So, so we wouldn't be putting this on for a vote until <coughs> next meeting anyways. That's right. That's, that's two weeks. That's so right. that's two weeks. We can put it on the town website. Yep. And, 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 I, and I'm, perfectly, I'm perfectly willing to warn it, warn it having, you know, having an awareness that People could go either way. They could be right. grateful that it's done, finally, it's been hanging out for a long time, or they, there could be a reaction that says, not enough public input. Not enough public input. Thank you for drafting it. Um, and, and, and the public that show can say, we don't like this, we don't like this, but we like this and like this. And based on that input, input you know, at the, bottom, at the end of the day, I'm gonna say is being on this board for 18 years, when people don't show up and don't participate, and then they throw mud balls after the work's all done, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, um, not constructive criticism, but just criticism and destructive criticism, as this board felt this summer, um, I don't appreciate it. Um, and I, I, I feel for the next select board if this behavior is going to continue. You know, we're, we're not making money on this. We're not making out. We base our decisions on a, our, our bet. We're making our best effort to represent everybody in this town and do it as well as we can. 
And, you know, this stuff is, at this point, it's like almost in our DNA. We've been hearing this stuff for decades. Oh, yeah. And we're trying different approaches. Rick came up with the speed signs. You know, do we warn a big vote and have hearings on that? No, we put the signs up. And, you know, I heard someone say, I don't like that blinking sign in beautiful Maple Corner. You know, well, we'll move it. And if this ordinance doesn't, if it's, it's too much, too fast, then we'll hear that at the next meeting. But if nobody shows up and nobody cares and you want to throw mud balls next summer because someone posts something negative on Front Porch Forum, I don't know how you defend against that. I don't know how you represent people like that. You know, I think we, people need to start participating in this democracy in this town. You know, they gotta start actively participating. Well, like and, Jamie and Marge and Donna and John are doing almost every meeting. But, and, but I, I, I do think that most people don't have the time that we are lucky to have being retired or whatever. And what happens is when people, when there's all kinds of discussions, people, a lot, a lot of people aren't paying attention at that point. Now you've got something in a draft form that people can actually look at right. and they can react to it. Right. And two weeks is, I don't think is enough time for people unless you, and putting just things up on the website, nobody, most people don't look there. So, the so newspaper you... used to be, somebody would come out and report and say, hey, this is what's going on. You know, Mark, I'm going to push back a little bit, okay? So, well, let me just finish, and finish. I think that okay. giving people the opportunity to know that now this is what could potentially be decided. There isn't a really good mechanism unless you get someone complaining on, um, I think that some of these things that affect the whole town. There needs to be a little more on the front push form because that's where it's at, you know, and or at getting a report and put it in the paper, but people don't read the paper. I just think what happens is that people don't have enough time to react to it before you make it. But but you don't you're not listening. I think you're not listening. The statute listening. anticipates okay. the public process. The public process isn't beginning and ending in two weeks. It begins after the adoption. That's what statute says. So we adopt, and then the public responds. We also hear in two weeks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use your argument. Stop, 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 stop. I want to use Marge's no. argument to push back qualitatively. We, are ha we have just announced that we're gonna have a hearing on the ARPA money at this meeting in two weeks, $100,000. No, it's not on the ARPA money. It's on the bond vote. On the bond vote. Four hundred thousand dollars. So we shouldn't do that in two weeks and make a decision. Well, we we you voted on it quite a no. We didn't. Weeks ago. No. As far as I'm not sure, I'm following what you're saying. We didn't vote on it, Marge. The the but the process. What John's point is that that's the process. Is that you the the Klaus, the Curtis Pond Association generated a petition and presented it to the to the board which doesn't create a choice for us it creates a here's another item that needs to go on the warning and then we're following a process and john's point is that that we are following a process as well guys we could we could keep it's the same amount could, of time but that's for four hundred thousand dollars march I, I just don't see but then there's a but, but we could keep debating this and it's 9 30 and none of us are better at our best in a debate that has no clear answer. Everybody's right. Everybody is. I just want everyone to right. go by the same standard. If okay. we're going to have a bond vote for four hundred thousand dollars, which also anticipates adding another hundred thousand after the bond vote, which we did, so like two weeks' notice for that that informational meeting, and then we go right into town meeting and a decision. Right. Because okay. so, that's, that's also by statute. Yeah, we're following the statutes, but okay. it's interesting. Um, okay. Interesting. So. I am wondering if we want to go to. Oh, well, let me just ask this question: How think, much time do you guys want to warn at the next meeting for this? Because there, there probably will be some. Half an hour. Yeah. Okay. But um, if nobody shows up. Well. Okay, um, Rick. I'm going to ask if we can 
move skip. things around a little bit. If I would love to hear a road report, <coughs> but let's we've had Donna here for the now. whole meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Hi Donna. Um, and and then um, for the Kurt, for the folks who may be interested in the update on dam insurance. The update on dam insurance from Passive is they're still looking to find more downstream money, and they they downstream have coverage, downstream coverage, yeah. um, and they have been in active updates of still looking, haven't found any, still haven't looking, haven't found any. That's the report there. Donna, come forward and join us on the grants management. <clears throat> Just start at the top and just quickly go through. Mm -hmm. And there's two for you to, for you to sign. Um, so for the Kent Hill scoping study, I don't really have much information about that. Is that? I mean, it's the inner. It's the culvert out here. That's the, right. It's the yeah. culvert here. Well, right. What is the next step? We're gonna have a vote on something tonight, I think. It's you have the grants on the project. I mean, where's what? Where, where, where are we in the yeah, process? Yeah, where are we at with this project? Well, they did the scoping study. Right. Um, so the brick application for that is, is right. Brick. Is that, that's what? That's what we're voting on next. Mm -hmm. I believe. Because Good night, Marge. Thank you. Scoping studies? I don't think so. I have a no. Rick would, is, would be the one that would know what's going on. Because <clears throat> I don't know it on that one. I'm just trying. I just found I forgot it. I did bring my classes. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Uh, um, this one that's bigger. My my question is just kind of bigger picture. Donna, we we knew you wanted to come tonight, but we didn't. We, are we going to go through each of your files and look at a spreadsheet? Is that what you were thinking? No. I guess the important thing is to sign the two, the Moscow Woods Road and the Grants and A. So, so that we Ken have Hill, Ken yeah. Hill Road. I have some stuff at home on Ken Hill Road, but you said you had everything from the um, on the Grants, right? A bunch of folders on on the on the Ken Hill Road. <coughs> well, I don't. I probably don't have any more information than what you have. Then okay. Well, then, then let's just go through this and. Um, okay. So after after the the Kent after Kent Hill, there's Lightning Ridge, and that work has been done. Right. And Toby's getting some of the documentation. Okay. Okay. And then Moscow Woods Road. You can sign that tonight. That's the one we want to yeah. sign. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Um, this, this, uh, That's the clay boils, not yep. confused with the bridge. That's the one that, yeah, they got <coughs> that multi stage project. Right, and then there's also the East Callis project. So, there's the, the, do, you want the just, do you want to just set me to pass it around so you can sign it? Yeah. yeah. We should make a motion. I'll make a motion that we sign off on the Moscow Woods Road project. This is the clay boil one, Donna. Oh, what? Is that the clay boil one? Uh, uh, yeah. The motion would be the 
pay yeah. twenty percent of the yeah. seventy thousand and fifty eight dollar amount. Okay, this is the. No oh, wait, no, that's the award amount. Is it twenty percent of that, or is that? Is no, that we're si aren't we aren't we signing the form it's for request for reimbursement? That plus twenty percent. Oh, that's it is. Yeah, the, yeah, this is yeah. to request request that's request. Yeah, that's for reimbursement. I see. Okay. Even when they don't, they just put the oh, I see the number on. They don't say what the project Please. is. But wait, this is the number. Yeah. Wait, is the award amount the amount we're getting? I'm confused. We're going to be getting. Back original award amount seventy thousand plus twenty percent, or is that included? Is it right on there? The original award class two, hundred percent of the work is completed. The municipality's portion is fifteen fifty seven fifteen thousand fifty seven dollars. The amount that we're going to get back is sixty thousand two hundred and twenty eight dollars and twenty four cents. Right. Yeah. Yep. So this will go back into the highway budget, Fine, basically, because yeah. we, 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 we put it out up front, and now we're going to get it back. Yeah, so that 70000 number is the amount? That was the total amount of the project costs. Okay. So we, yeah. And, and it's right here when you get it to sign. So it's not in kind. It's actual dollars we're putting forward. Um, well, the in kind, so I think, this is, is just to get our money. There should be yeah, documentation in the back of um, any in kind. Can we finish the vote? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm voting on. Well, we are voting to request a reimbursement. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I so I made a motion. Denise made a mo motion. Second. Which Rick has seconded that we, that we simply sign this request for reimbursement. Right. All the other parts of it are already all the numbers are read. Oh, okay. All done. This is this is the final step, just this so the just town can get its money so back. All in favor, right. please say aye. 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 Do you want me to go on to the next one? to submit that and then I'll, I'll, I'll also let Wendy know. Yes, because she's going to need to know that money is going to be coming in. Yeah. So the next okay, okay, so do we, we all, do we vote? We, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> I think we already did that. Yeah. Just in case. Okay, so the next one on this list is the Moscow Woods Bridge. And we've been awarded the grant. And my question is, I don't know if anybody has an answer. Is when is this going to be scheduled? And you can see that the we've got right now. We have uh, we have a required. I mean, we had an estimate from the Wolf Engineering on that. Yeah. And I, but I'm still. We, we didn't take an action yet to actually ratify that, did we? To be able to accept that. So we have to get back to them to do the initial, the temporary, the temporary repairs on that bridge. So we have to. Uh, uh, we have to accept that. We remember I presented that back at yep. our meeting. Yeah. So we have, the question is, do we, can we do that? We would talk about sole sourcing that. We approved that. We oh, did. We did it's approve the, it? Okay, yeah. so I have to contact yes. Wolf then. Yes, we did that and move forward. I'd have to go back and look at the minutes. It was a few months ago. I think okay, it was I thought we did. I'm, I'm having a day to move at me in those, when I found some notes and, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we did. It would be in the minutes. You approve the, the engineering yeah. report. Right. Okay, so yeah. we have to get so we have to get that. It's in it's in minutes that I don't think have been finalized things. Yeah, I've got them almost all I got them all caught up except for one. Um, and then the next one down loose road is I think the same thing. The engineering is done and it needs to go out to bid. That right. is also, they're waiting for we have to get right of easements. Easements, right away easements. Okay. And, what's um, and that's the lawyer that's got to do this for us. 
Has anyone asked? I haven't yet. I mean, did Janice? I, I haven't asked him about no, that. Okay, so we have to. We we'll have to get case in case to do the give us the. Well, we have to find the documents for that. And we'll have to get it going. Okay. So that that one has a deadline of, of this year. The one above at Moscow Woods Bridge is 2024. So. Yeah, and that's that's a huge project. Thank you. Thank you. Now the grants and aid, the next one, um, I guess we've been given the grant, but we need to tell them which roads we're doing. Is that right? Yeah, you mean oh, for the, uh, hold on, wait, I'm, I was just writing a note to myself. Well, say that again. The grant aid. Uh, yeah, the, And I guess I guess that list goes to um, Central Vermont Regional Planning, right? The roads that we're planning on doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't have that yet. Okay. I'm sorry, that's to come. To right. Be determined. Is... TPD. Right. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Then we have oh this FEMA grant. Loose uh, That's is that the that's same one? The, that's the same one as the one that goes with the one above, right? On the top, very top. Scoping study. Right, because I remember FEMA got involved because remember when we had the we had some kind of we had the flood, right? Got blocked. But isn't this isn't this federal money and the and the one above is state? Eventually, I mean, all the money. Yes, FEMA is federal. Yeah, FEMA is federal. But somehow, I th but somehow they go to they go together. No, I'm not sure. I remember. You think exactly. they go together? Like the it says, Cows is a sub recipient, so it looks like that they award it to the state. Right, they award it to the state through the state, and we receive the federal monies. So. But, but you think it's for that the same culvert, right? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I figured out too. I can't look. Yes. Okay. okay, then this next one is grants and aid, which you need to sign. And that was for work on Kent Hill Road. Oh, that was back in 21. This is it. Yeah, it's this one. So this is gonna be sort of the same thing. Are we getting reimbursed, right? Right. Which one are we on? Is this the we're on the um, grants and aid GA0046. Oh, I guess it's the one that sorry. <coughs> this this well, yeah. So this one we're getting $2,332 back, and I think you sign on the second page. I think it's, is there one spot there? There is. Okay. Shall we? Uh... I think we should, I guess I'll make a motion to authorize Rick to sign off on the grants and aid project on Kent Hill Road. That's for is, this one, is this the one that we warned? We yeah, warned? this was warned. The 1996, that one? Yeah. Okay. And so I made a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Yeah, I'm just confused. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 And this written. one is the one. Are there some that we have to sign that are also, that were not warned? Or no? Okay, so it's just those two. Yeah. Okay. I mean, here's here's. It must be select board chair. I'm sorry that I couldn't read that. So we'll have to, you might have to sign that chair. Yeah, you gotta sign it too. It's gotta be the chair. Sorry. I... We already did the, um, we already signed the municipal roads general permit stuff, Donna. Yeah. The next one down, the MRPG. Yeah, we already yeah, did okay, that. So that's mm -hmm. How would you guys feel about, um, and I think mostly it's how would Rick feel about it, but authorizing, tonight you authorized me to continue working with the East Callis Community Trust on grant stuff. 
um, until the new select board appoints somebody. So that there's a point of contact, you know, across the transition and they don't have to worry about that right away. Can I ask a question about that? Yes. When I read that, I couldn't tell if sort of your intention or hope was that we find somebody else to do it really quickly or that you were happy to do it. I put that in until you, I, I put that, the, the language that I put in that was confusing was to portray what I, I was hoping to portray a complete lack of presumption. Totally. Um, Jeff Cantor is, is the basic contact? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he calls me when something needs to happen and I do it. And so it's, I'm ambivalent about you know, if the if the new board if a new board feels like we need somebody different, then that's fine. And if you have other things to worry about, then I'm happy to keep mm -hmm. doing it. And so my question is whether we would w similarly want to authorize Rick to sign things that need to be signed related to highway grants, so that they can keep moving until. I mean, I'm just thinking about continuity for a new board. I don't know, I have this jump rope image of, you know, like, are you going to have time to do that? I'm, I'm going to be really careful. I've got to really restrict my bandwidth on what I can do. You know, I can, as road foreman, I'm not going to be tracking grants. I couldn't. I couldn't do that this it's not about tracking uh, I can grants. track grants. Yeah, I just, I just need answers for some It's not about tracking the grants. It's about somebody being available to sign. Who is authorized by this select board with a clear idea that it's until the new, a new yeah, select board appoints somebody sign. different. Yeah. So that Donna has a place to go and say, could you please sign this? Because I don't imagine that, I mean, when you're applying for a new grant, that's one thing that needs select board action. But when you have applied and been awarded a grant and you just need to keep things moving forward, it doesn't feel like it has the, I don't know, the imperative it's that- It's housekeeping. It's housekeeping. Yeah. And right, it doesn't yeah, yeah. need necessarily to have- Okay, so I make that motion that we authorize Rick to sign grants in process. Related to highway. Related to highway. Grant uh, documents. Grant. Mm -hmm. Documents. Grant related documents. Related to roads. How does that get reported back, just out of curiosity? You know, with when in. Every I mean, there's not going to be anything to sign unless the work gets done. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Right. <laughs> well, that's a different question. You a massage, John? <laughs> I get these grabs in my neck sometimes. I don't know why. Uh, okay, so then do we? Do you think we need? I, that I don't mind working it out with, with the, you know the new select board. Okay. I'm not, I'm I don't like you said. There's not that I'm happy much. to help them sort of transition until we all figure out what's going on. Yeah, yeah. There's not going to be that much, I don't think, to be signed, unless there's a new grant, and then that would be the new select board. Right. So is, are you saying, Donna, it's not really that helpful at what I'm suggesting? Yeah. I don't think I don't, it's, I don't think think so. it's needed. Okay. I'm just going to stay on top of this and try to help the new select board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm okay. Draw my right. If it's not helpful, then. And I guess the main thing is, you know, John, is when is this stuff going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's and John. Gonna, and, and for the, for the, uh, uh, you know, for the matching grant, we have to keep track of people's, you know, the, Work crews time and try. Right, but they and they know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But you know, I can hound them. Yeah. yeah. You don't mind me hounding you, do you? <laughs> Donna, it's amazing. It's thank you for doing yeah, this. Is great. Are, are, there, are there other things in particular you really want to put our eyes on? Um, well, I also have a list of the non-highway grants. Yeah. Now we got the penal one. Um, could we? Is there something? Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm thinking, and I and I'm I'm going to say this at some some risk to being attacked because um, <laughs> you sat talk. here. You well, no, don't worry about that. Okay, if I don't have to worry about the fact that you sat here all night, it's ten o'clock. My brain is tired. Yeah. Everything about me is tired, and I don't want to be. I want to bring more energy to honor the work you've done instead of being like. Yeah. <laughs> I could come to the next meeting. Well, that may not even be it. We might need to have a meeting where we just... Just do grants. Just 
talk about grants because I feel like the next meeting yeah, is going to be pretty full. Right. I mean, because two of my questions was the East Callis store and then the ARCA funds. I can right. I can talk with you offline or, or yeah, okay. and or Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would suggest yeah. Jeff. Well, or maybe Jeff is going to know. He's, he's already sent me all the documentation. Yeah. I haven't looked at yet, but no, that he's. I mean, he manages everything. That's, yeah. I'm authorized by the board to keep things moving. When it's big, like last time, there was an actual agreement to sign, so right. the board right. approved that. But other than that, I just do the the, the housekeeping. Yeah. Um, okay. And side. I have in. I can talk to you about like the FEMA, the generator thing, the generator grant. Right. And then the only other thing I have is the is um, that Maple Corner National Register. I think that needs to be submitted. Okay. okay. So, so, is that, so is that different than that's different than the biking tour? Is that a, is, is that a CLG? Yeah, this is a CLG. So in terms of things that we need to sign or approve, then we can do sign them. Well, yeah, we can do two. one of two things. We can authorize if they're if they're truly just housekeeping, like the things we just did. Yeah. We can authorize somebody to sign them outside of the room, or we can sign them um, without a lot of discussion at the next meeting, or we can schedule a separate meeting where we learn about <coughs> the grants and hear about the work that Don has done. What do you guys think? What do you want to do? I don't think there's anything to sign. You've just signed yeah. the two. I mean, the main, the main okay. thing was to get somebody, thank you, Donna, to, to keep to get a, a tracking of all of these because when Toby left, we had nothing really to track any of these grants. So it was sort, it was sort of like starting from scratch as to how do we gonna keep track of this because we have to right. so we can get reimbursed. Yeah. Um, so I think you, you know you've done a wonderful job getting and there's nothing this done. Else to sign? Not you know, right now. There, there's one more grant coming up. Okay. Um, but it's in April. Well, this is the uh, which one is that? Uh, the pavement. Oh, it's the. Um, oh, which one is that? Oh, the Lightning Ridge paving, Lightning Ridge over by the school. Which is done. Work, right? Yeah, which is all done. That's done. Yeah. Yeah. And you said this is the one you said Toby's working on getting a reimbursement. Yeah, what, what happened there is it went over what we had asked the state for. Yeah. But Toby says that he can uh, resubmit a request and then we'll get more money back. And so I'll follow up with him about that. But we have the documentation. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, we could put it on just just for you guys to sign it next time. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Put it on yeah. the agenda and then that'd be out of the way. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's fine. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, so now we can do it as a consent agenda. And okay, and this is, in which one? Is, this is the Lightning it's Ridge. This, yeah, the Lightning Ridge, that's the second one here. Yeah. What's it like to warn it, Donna? What's the formal, what should we warn? Um, I guess the grant number and it was uh, paving, fog lines, repair shoulders, that little piece of. So basically, it's pavement by the school. So is it going to yeah. be a form to sign to request additional funds? Is that what you're saying? Well, you're going to you're going to just sign for the reimbursement, right? Oh, Toby's going to submit. Well, the well he was hoping to get more money out of the state, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, so know, we're going to sign off on the with this point, we just get it signed and reimbursement, on. like we did for the um, Moscow Woods, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The reimbursement form for yeah. PO nineteen sixty five. Okay. Okay, that helps. Thank huh. you, Donna. <laughs> so, so, Toby, so Toby sent you his Excel spreadsheets and no, oh, no, I created that. She created that. <laughs> You're still waiting for Toby to get your stuff back, right? Get me your stuff. He he's helping me um, get the documentation from the garage. Oh, okay. Will you ask him if he has a town's iPad? I dare you. Oh. <laughs> We've been asked before. We Who's can't iPad? It's the town. The town's iPad. Oh. And we, you know, I'm and we're say paying a fee on it. You know what really needs to happen is a list of all yeah, an inventory. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just an inventory yeah. tax. That was supposed yeah. to happen yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. We knew we had that when he was supposed to return it. And we didn't get it returned. 
Getting them or not returning them? He didn't see it, I bet. <laughs> Probably not. Well, maybe he's not using it. Oh, yes. We don't it's know him. for sure that he has it, but oh, he's, okay. he's the last possibility. He's the one who had it. Yeah, it was his iPad. He bought it he, yeah, for he, his he, use yeah. with but the roads. And he got it out for his iPhone at the same right. time. Right. And we're paying a monthly fee on it. It's pretty steep. For the, and we don't even have access to it. Mm. So we want so. to try to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're trying to save Thanks, some Donna. money. Thank you, Donna. Yeah. Donna, the liaison. Oh, okay. So, they say the beer's cold. So, I didn't get clarification. Is the traffic ordinance going on the agenda? I'm going to put it on the agenda, no? absolutely. Okay. On the 20th, I said yes. I would, and I would. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, and, yeah. And, I like the ordinance, John. So I'm clear. Well, no, it's it's about the process. I, I like I like I the ordinance. I see that the time I, frames are identical or nearly identical to the five hundred thousand dollar time frame. I just think that's interesting. Yeah. Maybe the public needs another a month or two. I don't well, agree with that. I think town meeting folks can. Okay. So what else? So what else do we need to do? Do we? I, I, I'd like to go into executive session. Oh, let's speak about a legal matter. Does that mean yeah. Yes. And then we're out of here. And then we're, we're going to, you know what we're going to do, Joe? Oh, we're going to eat, we're going to eat Girl Scout cookies. I was going to say, does anybody want some more pretzels? This is worse than worse. John, these are so good. Do you know that my kids are both in college and nobody's home to help eat these except <laughs> me and John. There we love you, John. Yeah. We love you, brother. Thanks. You're awesome. One really quick question. Yes. On my way out about the, uh, just crossed my mind, if part of the discussion around this ordinance and the signs has been around the budget and expense of replacing you know, you know, all of no, the signs for changing the speed limit on uh, so many roads. We yeah, didn't no, have that conversation. Okay. No. That's just something yeah. that crossed my mind. We can take I, public comment, and we can. That's a good comment. It's, it's just, good comment. It's just, yeah, that's, that's a good just comment. A I didn't think about that. That's a but great it's comment. It's a right? lot of signs. That is. It, just, it is. And so maybe, maybe we don't money. do that. I was trying to provide yeah. equity to everybody. Get, get some time. You know, so somebody said, oh, they got theirs lowered, and how come I got speeders? So, you know, no matter what I did, if I just did three roads, I would have gotten kicked. Why, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I can't yeah. anticipate who's going to show up and who's going to be yeah. aggrieved by whatever we try to anticipate. And I'm not criticizing or bringing up. I'm yes, I know you're not. You never are. <laughs> but can I ask something? <laughs> you know, the question is, I mean, with something like that, is could we actually, could we stagger implementation right. in the, I, I, so that I we can no budget? Idea. I mean, I would say, you know, county road, we try to do. We could have this thing effective. The next a year from now, give it a year, a year or two, whatever that yeah, whatever. is. How would that work? To, to get us a plan. It's like, just something to great. Have the effect. effective date, effective, you know, July first. But then it, well, it's the adoption date is yeah. generally yeah. effective. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie. Thanks, Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for staying late. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to go into John? Do I'd we like need, to ask that we go into executive session discussing right, the no. legal matter. All right. Bye, right. John. So, is there? Do we need to make a finding that premature public knowledge <coughs> put? Is there? I don't know how this would fit. It might be personnel. I don't know. Fit. Just all right. Well, let's let's make the finding. But finding you don't have to do that for personnel. What was that? I don't know. Something over there. Okay. All right. Oh, um, God, door shut. I guess. Is there a mo? Denise, will you? Go oh, we have it right here, don't we? We have them on yeah. here. Uh, I make a motion to go into executive session discuss personnel issues under one VSA section three one three a three. And what time is it? Ten oh six. All in favor, please. Did somebody second oh. it? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay.